Hello and welcome to We Got a Podcast, a podcast about Dragon Ball from A to Z, from Earth to Namek to Sadala. We cover it all. My name is Randy. And I'm Magic Man Doug. <laughs> we are the world's strongest under the heavens duo here every other week to talk your ear off about fights, goofs, and everything else in the Dragon Ball cosmos. But this episode might be a little too much for just the two of us today. And thankfully, <gasps> Ken has answered the call yet again. Ken, how's it going? What's new with you, bud? Uh, hey, you know, Randy, when you say, hey, come talk about a character, I'm like, hey, all right, as long as we're not talking about Gohan or someone lame like that, I'm here. <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh, and the coolest, no, I- edgiest characters on this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, not a whole lot is... Uh, is- been going on i'm reading Yu-Gi-Oh, and Ooh, oh yeah. i am towards the end of the duelist kingdom arc uh i don't like the stuff before the duelist kingdom that was always hyped up for me mm. unpopular so, take i've never read Yu Gi Oh. <laughs> it's it's a bunch of it's not just card games in the manga it's a bunch of different games what game are you on now it's mostly the card game but before oh, okay. it hits that they dabbled in the card game a little bit but it was really whatever flavor of the week takahashi wanted to write about and gotcha. i didn't think he was very good at writing in an episodic way but now that he has a whole narrative he's spinning and things are more serialized it's incredible he knows what he's doing with his characters oh cool okay so in the duelist kingdom that is like with pegasus and all that right pegasus j crawford yeah okay yes i'm sorry i wow. should put some respect on that name <laughs> well uh, you probably know him as maximilian Pegasus because you're a dubby. <laughs> you're a four kids <laughs> Yeah, that's true. For that show, I am. That's the that's all I saw. Yu-Gi-Oh! I really have a lot of nostalgia for that dub, so I'm not I'm not even hating on it. I think it's wonderfully right. ridiculous. I love the one right. piece intro for four kids. I do too, honestly. Both of them mm-hmm. are great. Ken is shaking mm-hmm. his head. He's I like, know. Oh. I, I'm shaking my head because I sing that. Okay, anytime I'm like, I Take say, a yayo, gum gum. yeah, I say, yayo, yayo, all the time. And then I just <laughs> yeah. go into the whole thing and my wife hates it. <laughs> the whole thing. Um, all 35 yeah. seconds you're in. You have to. You have to. <laughs> you do. Contractually, you have to. I've, I've <laughs> heard that. It's like when you say academy, you don't say just, I'm going to academy. You say, I'm going to academy sports and outdoors, the right stuff the low price academy <laughs> jesus is this a regional yeah. thing i don't know what this is <laughs> oh it's a sports and outdoors store store obviously <laughs> right stuff the low price every day here academia thing but no way off <laughs> <laughs> well i'm glad that you're enjoying your card game based manga that isn't called dragon ball heroes <laughs> good old dragon ball it. heroes I know it touched. love it <laughs> i haven't read it <laughs> well doug what's new with you how you been i've been good man no not nothing new on this front i'm just trying to uh i think figures have uh have gone down i've gotten most of what i need so now i'm just calming down with that so i have a little bit of money now what you need or right. what you're like obsessed with <laughs> uh, uh, uh yeah same thing obsessed need uh <laughs> <laughs> There's some figures that like the the new uh, Gamma 1 and Gamma 2 Ichiban Kujis that are out, but I don't really need them because I'm going to get the figure arch version coming up soon anyway. So I'm good on that front. You're a madman. And I appreciate it's the hustle. It's an addiction. And the, it is. <laughs> I think we've discovered that you do have an addiction because there's a gambling problem where you want to get these figures. Is that it? There's no fun no. gamble chase anymore for no, these no, figures? No, luckily for there's, no, there's no gotcha kind of system with this. It's just that when it's out, you get it now or you have to pay more later. So I'm like, no, I'm going to get it mm-hmm. now. No point in waiting. I know you... I know you're playing Dokkan for a hot minute there. Yeah, Maybe I'm always playing Dokkan in and, in and out. Yeah, but I, I never spend money on it. It's just like, oh, free stones, here we go. And then I I, oh, okay. I, I don't I don't summon on it until there's a really good banner with a really good character. So I have like 500 or 1,000 stones by the end of the year that I can put <sighs> into one one banner, banner and still not get anything, but whatever. <laughs> it happens. <laughs> but how about you, Randy? How you, how you doing, man? What's new with you? I'm, I'm doing pretty good. I'm playing... Metroid Prime Remastered, and yeah, it's good stuff. Uh, I spent last night getting like seven artifacts because I got all the upgrades and I only found like three of those on my way through the game just naturally. So I'm like, well, time to run across the whole ding dang map to find all these spinny things so I can go into that last area. So I got the last one last night. I'm going to go. I'm going to finish it. But other than that, I've just been bouncing with excitement for Resident Evil 4 Remake coming out 
on Friday, Thursday night. I can't remember. Oh, that comes out that soon. Dang. Now, last week you said you were vibrating. So, or is this like an upgrade? That was or a downgrade? private conversation, Ken. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was in confidence, Ken. I don't don't appreciate oh, damn, you bringing bad. that up. Oops. It's an upgrade because we're getting closer. So I was vibrating, and now that vibration has increased to the point where I'm going, oh, uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah, the it's altitude. Erratic. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yep. Exactly. Amplitude. Amplitude. My, my yes. Ampl- amplitude. Isn't uh, Breath of the Wild 2 coming out soon, too? Yeah, like, sometime, but it's not Resident Evil 4, so why do I care? Right. I mean, but it just threw me off that it's like, oh, yeah, it's going to come out soon now. And I'm, I'm like, oh, I'm, I'm still like waiting months for this game to come out. But uh, to, to bring in Dragon Ball terms, it's coming out on Android Day. So. Ah. And, oh, May 19th? <laughs> Cut what? this out. I didn't, I didn't get the right date right. What's, what was the Android date? <laughs> About a week too late, Doug. <laughs> May 9th. As soon as you said no, Android, I'm like... Piccolo Day. <laughs> <laughs> Just trying to aggravate Ken. That's what we're here for. <laughs> As soon as you said the Android day, I'm like, oh, I don't care about cell phones. I'm an iPhone guy. <laughs> I will say I also thought the 19th. I can't remember the day. Ken, 12th. what's the day? 12th at 10 a.m., some number of kilometers uh, south. Or something, southwest something. of South City. It's actually just south. Some, but the, the, the dub made it southwest of South City, which just has a ring, nice ring to it. They love that Tex-Mex flavor. Ooh. <laughs> Who doesn't? So I still don't know when Breath of the Wild comes out. Great. <laughs> Let's move on. <laughs> he just said it. <laughs> I don't Makes listen. Well. This is a podcast. This is words. Anyway, let's stop talking about Zelda and shooting zombies in the head. Let's talk what we're here for, which is Dragon Ball stuff. Specifically, this time, we're going to talk about Vegeta. Great character <gasps> or greatest character. Doing a character study? We're doing a character study. We did Trunks before. Uh, Mary from Tempelo Trunks was on for that one, and that was fun episode. Such a blast. Yeah. So now we got to do his daddy. His so daddy. <laughs> we're going to do Vegeta. Um, you might have heard of the guy uh, just as a background here. He was introduced in Chapter 204 of the manga, Episode 5 of Z, if you are a anime-only person. Uh, he is Prince of the Saiyans, Prince Vegeta the Fourth. we've learned. And, uh, I don't know the son of who doesn't know who Vegeta is. My mother knows who Vegeta is. I don't think you have to go super in depth, but if you will, I know you love your hey. little uh, your your details and factoids. Randy. You know that's funny. I think my mom probably knows who Vegeta is. Too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I remember. I have a memory of being in college in my basement playing Budokai Tenkaichi, either two or three. And my mother came down to do laundry, and I was, like, fighting, and I did a transformation. She's like, oh, did he just go Super Saiyan? I'm like, yeah, he did. Yeah, he sure you did, got it. <laughs> How's dinner I'm coming glad. along? <laughs> <laughs> She's our mom's robots that just do laundry and cook you dinner, Doug. When you're a teenager and you're un- uh, unrespectful, yeah. <laughs> I was a very good boy, I'll have Aww. you know. Oh, you, didn't take her, you don't take her for granted or anything? That's no, good. not at all. Good, good. Anyway, back to Vegeta. Just so that you know, this man was born age 732, and he is one of the last four-ish Saiyans living after the <laughs> destruction of their home world. Big asterisk. Yeah, big asterisk. That number gets to change a whole bunch, which is real fun. You guys, I wrote a whole long thing of like what happens in the, the history of the show, Vegeta, what he does. But uh, what, do you, what, do you, what do you know about Vegeta? You know, like what do you guys know about him? Uh, he's a pretty bad dude. Bad man, you should well, say. He is a bad man. He's the, the second main character in Super. <laughs> <laughs> Much to oh, everyone's chagrin. <laughs> what happened to Krillin? His day in the sun was long ago. You know, I think they, uh, looking back, when I made a Krillin AMV, I'm like, there's not many scenes of Goku and Krillin together. <laughs> like, it's just when they were training when they were younger, and that's he's, oh, no. he's around, but you don't really see like a best friendness in there. Or that could have just been me. I don't know if you guys ever thought about that. Yeah, it's just off the cuff. I'm thinking about uh, Goku, you know, reading his memories. And then yeah. uh, could it end just bursting through that plane? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, to give him a Goku, hug. yeah. Yeah, but that's really it. <laughs> and there's also, I don't know, the end of GT is kind of touching with the two of them on the on the beach at Kame House. Right, right. Yeah, but no, but, but Vegeta's definitely taking up the mantle of the, the best friend, but in a different angle where they're not hugging each other through planes. Man, that would be wild to see <laughs> Vegeta <laughs> bursting through a plane to Sh- hug. Sure, there's plenty of fanfics you can search out there for that. He could Straight. barely hold hands with Goku. <laughs> <laughs> it's because oh, he's yeah. afraid of his feelings is why. Yeah, Vegeta, we love him. We uh, we love him. We hate him. He's annoying. Uh, <laughs> he does some dumb shit, but he's still super endearing. And no, I don't know. He's not my yeah. favorite character, but he's definitely an awesome character. Ken, what are your feelings on Vegeta? Vegeta is my second favorite character. 
Oh. Uh, I think he is the best After Tobble character. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. Tobble number one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, he's the best written character. He has the best story arc throughout the series. And I think even some of that would continue into Super. But like talking about original story mm-hmm. of Vegeta, and I would include GT in that as a natural extension mm-hmm. of where he ends up with Z. Yeah, and second favorite character, I think he's just, he's great. I love him. You think like Piccolo would have, like, He's Piccolo, but better as 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 terms of like written story wise. Of it, it just made Vegeta better because he's also a Saiyan. So there's that similarity that he can have with Goku. Piccolo cheats. Piccolo is my favorite cheats. character. Okay, so I'm gonna oh, say that. number one. Okay, great. <laughs> uh, he's my favorite character, but his character progression cheats. His really only defining moment of growth is with Gohan, and then. Yeah. Nail says, hey, fuse with me. I won't change your personality while well, he was lying. <laughs> and then uh, Kami says, hey, fuse with me. I won't change your personality. And he was lying. <laughs> so Piccolo just becomes a Kami Nail fusion at the end. Oh, I didn't think about it like that. You're right. Like it all influences him. I mean, Gohan mostly influences him, but I guess the, yeah, I am, I'm nor, not Piccolo nor Kami. <laughs> Just call me Piccolo. Just messing up that movie 12 line. <laughs> I'm the instrument I'm of like, your defeat. Oh, he's an instrument. <laughs> he said it. <laughs> he is. It's canon. <laughs> <laughs> so if you're tuning in to episode 51 of this podcast about Dragon Ball and you don't know a lot about Vegeta, well, guess what? We're going to talk about what he's done through the entire series and and give some comments on that. So as I said, he was introduced in chapter 204, episode 5. Vegeta is introduced alongside Nappa uh, as substantially stronger than Raditz. He's there on another planet, munching on some some limbs, I think, with uh, Nappa around a campfire. Yeah, as getting the the transmission from Raditz about what the whole deal is going on there, and they learn about the Dragon Balls, and Vegeta's like, "Hey, I'm going to use those bad boys. We're going to Earth right now." So they set off, uh, come to Earth, uh, kills Nappa, which is fun. I think everybody enjoys that. It's pretty ruthless. And uh, wrecks everybody before eventually being defeated. So in this first arc, you know, going back in time to when you first experienced that, this story, you know, what were your thoughts on this Vegeta dude? And I want to start with you, Doug. Um, I think I, I first started watching when the Namek series was a uh, arc was going on. So I got I got that Vegeta as opposed to the Vegeta oh, we get in okay, Saiyan Saga. Right. So he was already like a, a stone cold by himself loner that, you know, fucks everyone up just to get his own way. Mm-hmm. Um, but no, I thought he was cool. His his design just itself, it just commands like, I don't know. I, I can't hate the word coolness. It's just, it's just, he's just a cool character, you know? Um, but uh, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't love him, especially in his outfit that he had, where it was just like one big Saiyan armor without like the, the stretchy bands that, you know, he gets in the Cell Saga and all that kind of stuff. But Mm. No, I don't know. I liked him. Uh, Ken, what about you? We're all kind of damned of being of a generation that as soon as we found out about Dragon Ball Z, we got on the internet and learned who Vegito was. So (laughs) to like try and go back 23 years to figure (laughs) out how I felt about Vegeta at first, um, I guess like Doug, I was more the Namek Frieza version of Vegeta is more in my head. Mm. Um, so yeah, it's really hard to say, but if I'm trying to look at it from like perspective of I'm going to sit down and reread the series now, I'm he's kind of a punk ass bitch, uh, a little bit. <laughs> he's like, a cocky he, like they, jock that comes in yeah. like I, I, I'm a yeah. spoiled brat and you're you're nothing to me. Uh, before this, uh, I actually wrote notes for myself here, so I have here nice. written a cocky prince with the power <laughs> to back it up. Ooh, yeah. That's, That's a pretty cool character. True. Does he exclaim he's the Prince of All Saiyans as often as he does in the dub? I don't think he does, right? In the original. <laughs> I always think the line after he becomes Super Saiyan and they, they aired this on like the Toonami cuts yeah. or whatever. I'm the Prince of All Saiyans, Saiyans once, once again. again. Yeah, yeah, yeah we all did the hand thing. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Damn you, Toonami. <laughs> burned it into our brains it's so synonymous with the character in in the dub sphere but if watching the series again in japanese i don't think he's, he's like he mentions it that he is but i don't think he says it as often as he does in the dub i will say i had to fight i had to delete when i was typing this out. i'm like who is he he's prince of all 
Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> Prince of the science. <laughs> like, I was going to put all in there just from that line. Which, which it makes the the trunks moment. Um, kid trunks when he, when he's getting his, his shit rocked by uh, Fat Boo. He's talking to uh, trunks is talking to Goten like you know who he is. He's the prince of of, of all Saiyans. It makes it more impactful when you don't hear it every other ten minutes from Vegeta. When you in the Japanese mm. version, when you just hear like, oh yeah, he is a prince of all the Saiyans, as opposed to like, yeah, trunks we know. It's just, I, I don't know. You know what I mean? We hear it. Every second. Yeah. It's his catchphrase. Yeah. yeah. I really like this introduction because I started on Toonami from episode one. So I got that introduction of Vegeta from the first time he shows up. And I really dug... It was a thing that I'd never seen before, which is little guy strong. Big guy not as strong. Mm-hmm. So that impressed me of like, oh man, he's tiny. But like, he's the one you don't want to fuck with. Yeah. So and we were fortunate in that time. Uh, you're saying you didn't read the Bible? Uh, are we talking about the manga or are you saying specifically the christian bible (laughs) david and goliath okay i get it yeah yeah i did but uh that didn't have cool beam struggles so you gotta that's in the never mind that's in the the extended lore action of chapters (laughs) that's in the uh the book of war novels yeah (laughs) Uh, might be more of a religious man if there was a manga of the Bible. <laughs> younger. There might be. Well, there's a manga about Jesus, but he's like chill and like just hanging oh, out. Oh, yeah. Saint Young Men or something. Is that like what that. it is? Yeah. I knew you would know. I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> so I dug him just because, yeah, he is a cocky dude, but he does have the, you know, the power to back it up because they do finally start to fight. And yeah. I think it's super clear, at least to me, my interpretation of that whole fight is like Goku has worked a lot and we're like, oh, man, he's the hero. He's going to do this. But like Vegeta kind of kicks the crap out of him and like he has yeah. to do other tricks and have his friends come and help out. That's to, the like, great part about the Saiyan arc is that it just it, it takes Goku to the brink. It takes everyone to the brink. Like Everyone's there. Goku, uh, Krillin, I mean, Gohan and Krillin and even Yajirobe mm-hmm. are just like using everything they have to take down this one guy who still has so many tricks up his sleeve. It's wild, right? And then he gets to live, which is really cool. You know, seeing yeah. that, like, okay, well, they took out Raditz, so, like, obviously they got to take out this guy. Oh. No, he okay. just leaves. There's going to be more to this guy. All of us are so, so mad that Goku's just letting him go. Like, what What are you doing? Why are you letting him go? And then come to find out. He, <laughs> you Goku don't understand. Goku does that with everyone, <laughs> and it turns out for the better <laughs> most of the time. But in, like, in what way is that, like, the greatest insult to Vegeta, too? <laughs> that's that's true. true. He has to live with that. Yeah, if I think of science in, like, Klingon terms, you know, mm. <laughs> what would be the worst thing in your than your enemy having you like at your throat and then letting you go? Yeah, right, man. The disrespect. No wonder, even no. though he has that grudge against Goku the entire time. <laughs> that is true. So, Doug, you had talked about it, you know, because you came in for the the Namek, Namek stuff. So, talking about that, let's just go through that arc real quick. After getting eventually gets spanked on earth uh he heals up finds out that frieza also knows about the dragon balls and that there's another set on namek so vegeta just hightails it straight there to trying to beat him to the punch he gets there gets to show off some cool new tricks he learned on earth yeah. like one he's much stronger now after healing from yeah the whole zenkai boost gets really introduced in this in this right? uh, arc takes out kiwi which is really rad. We're like, oh man, he's got his own rival. This guy's gonna go play. Oh, he's dead. <laughs> Not at all. I right. know. <laughs> it is cool how much time we get to spend with an antagonist. I think it's the first time in Dragon Ball to this point that we like get chapters focused on like the the, the antagonist and like, just going around his adventure, seeing what he's doing. Right. Well, we do get that time in at least in the anime of Tao Pai Pai going clothes shopping. Yeah. So. <laughs> I can't. How could I forget? <laughs> The How infamous, could you yeah, yeah, yeah. I have two of two top Popeye figures right now, so I should know. <laughs> but w- is there one I, of him clothes shopping? Because then you'd know what happens. Same outfits, but one is a cyborg and one isn't. Mm. What I love so much about Vegeta in Namek and Frieza is that he's this crafty tactician. Yes. Yeah. As a part of that, of him making all the right chess moves, he's willing to compromise and be like, I got to team up with this stupid Baldy and this <laughs> <Yeah>. kid <laughs> on a planet of greenies that I hate. Whoa. You know, busting out. Vegeta, Vegeta, Vegeta said it, not me. Okay. That's fair. You're just the messenger. While yeah. pointing at him with the finger guns, like these greenies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and he's 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 even going so far as he tells this this baldy he's like you gotta you let me, let me Chris Sabbath voice sorry let's hear right, it let's hear. I need you to blast a hole in me 
you know. <laughs> oh yeah, like even down to the nitty. Yeah, yeah he just he's just not not afraid to get dirty, not afraid to use every resource he has. It's it's great. Even when like Gohan comes and saves him from Raccoon's bla- mouth blast, he's like, "Why did you save me? That was your perfect chance to take out this guy or or whatever." You know, he, he's always thinking about the end goal. Yeah, and when he he doesn't let his anger get in his way. Like when he finds out that he's been double crossed by Gohan with his watch, his yes. big, big ass <laughs> yeah. watch, he's infuriated. And but then his when wrath. he gets there, he finds Gohan having just had his power unlocked, and then boom, he senses the Ginyu Force, and he's like, "Okay, I don't forget whatever problem I have yeah. with you right now. <laughs> we got to work together. We got a and bigger it's, problem." It's, and that happens a couple times, and it's just God. He's just such a compelling character. It really mm-hmm. is. Yeah, he really, really is. Yeah, I love that that quick turn because yeah, he does go from furious to like, okay, I've got what this thing I've got to do. Recognizes, okay, there's a bigger threat. There's doing the math in his head. I know I got stronger. There's no way I can take out these dudes. So let's just do this. And that's a good and- story. That's good storytelling because this it all feels natural. It all just seems like okay, yeah, this makes sense. He would do this, and he would team up with them and all that kind of stuff. Other other stories would lack on that aspect, but no, Toriyama nails it. Yeah, and there's this tension the whole time. <laughs> it's like they're not friends. <laughs> uh, it's it's great. And then he, you know, shows them like, okay, let's go over here, get new clothes, we'll get healed up, take a nap, <laughs> whatever you got to do. Like it's just this very uneasy com- like companionship for uh, taking out Frieza. Mm-hmm. And then yeah, like you said, he's trying to calculate what's the way I can do this. I, he does get a bit too cocky where he's like, I'm a super saiyan now, and even I can take Frieza. Yeah. And he's super camp. <laughs> and Man, I wonder how that moment did you guys when he said that, did you already know what a Super Saiyan was and it has blonde hair? Or did you because I, I, well, I don't know anyone in America who didn't know what a Super Saiyan was. So when when he said that, we're like, No, you're not. In the in the story, Vegeta has already speculated that Goku has done it. Mm-hmm. Oh, and when so I against, think yeah. My read on it is that he's all jazzed up by he <laughs> believes he's seen this happen already, uh-huh. and he thinks he can do it too. Right, because we we don't we don't know at this point that it's a transformation, or if Vegeta doesn't know that at this point it's a transformation, they could just be like, oh, I have the strength of a, I am considered now a Super Saiyan. Right. Yeah. Exactly. So he doesn't see there's a physical difference, but you know he sees how strong Goku is, and then after taking out Jis and things like that, mm-hmm. I'm sure he surmises like, okay, I'm at least at his level now. So if he was a super saiyan, that means I am. Oh, and yeah, yeah. And, I guess that makes sense. By this point in the series, Vegeta reveals about the Zenkai boost stuff, yes. which Goku purposefully exploits in his spaceship and Vegeta exploits <laughs> by getting his, his his crap pushed in several times. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I don't know. He's cocky, but also he's kind of got this knowledge and he's it's a little kind of flawed logic there where he's like okay i must be now which means i can defeat frieza but like that's a whole well no if, if, like ken said if he thinks that goku is one and then he reaches that he he can defeat uh enemies as strong as uh goku could then he must be mm-hmm. one as well that that makes what that makes sense guys, what did you guys think about that scene where he kind of goes all out against frieza i think this is i can't remember if it's a second transformation or his third or fourth um i think it, yeah, it's his final and we even have that narrator thing of like, you know, Vegeta realizes like it's over and there's nothing he can do. And he's, he's like actually crying. crying. Yeah. There's a figure uh, of that. <laughs> of course. That's why you remember it. <laughs> yeah. The it looks like Jace too, coming out of his eye. <laughs> it does. It does. That's the one. Yeah. 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 I, I didn't get it. I didn't get uh, Yeah. But I wish I did. <laughs> you could actually squirt water into it. And then when you walk by, he starts to cry. <laughs> well, no, impressive. doesn't he might explain that he's a Super Saiyan against first form Frieza or does he not do it? Because I know he fights him as first form. Yeah, uh, he does do it for first form. I think he's like, but then he gets to sh- try to fight me because he gets his shit kicked in with final form. Yeah. But either way, like, yeah, it's a pretty powerful moment, I think, where oh, yeah. Vegeta's kind of always had this tough exterior that even when the chips are down, he's like, I'm going to figure out a way through this. And at that yeah. point, he's like, nope. He's got like this like ultra ego and like he just he just thinks he can take on the world. But he's that- just there to remind him that he's not not there yet. That part is great, but it doesn't it doesn't compare at all to Vegeta crying as he's dying. Mm. And he is passing mm. on his will and his revenge onto Goku, who accepts it. Yeah. yeah. Like, Goku takes this, like, looks at Frieza with a sense of revenge after this point. And yeah, that he wouldn't have otherwise, right? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And it's this, this beautiful passing of the torch. Yeah, because Goku doesn't have that, that Saiyan vengeance, like, vendetta that... Vegeta does, but you know, like you said, once he inherits it from Vegeta, 
It makes sense. Mm. I think Love he that. realizes how important this whole thing is to Vegeta in that moment. Because otherwise he wouldn't have, you know, changed. You'd been like, oh, I gotta, I get to fight the strongest guy. I hope I do well. But if not, oh well. That's well, that's fun. one of Goku's greatest uh, strength is that his his empathy. So he feels Vegeta's pain and can internalize it's that. Good. It's good. And then Vegeta gets gets murdered, which is uh, not great for him. No, not great <laughs> at all. But luckily, wishes wishes do come true, and he comes yeah, back. How do you feel about the the anime versus the manga where he comes back and? actually sees goku as a super saiyan compared to the manga where he doesn't i don't like the anime one because he's i don't know he's happy about it he's like oh yeah somebody did it and like right. glad that freeze is gonna get beaten i love that because it's like <laughs> it's early echoes of the and we're gonna get to this i'm sure that you are number one speech you know, uh, you know true. it's like vegeta being happy that s- someone some scion did it <laughs> and he got to see it happen kakura you dog <laughs> i think it takes on it granted it's much later but i think it takes away from that moment when he sees trunks and frieza like oh shit what is this dude like yeah because he yeah. hasn't seen that yet so that's why I, that's why i'm more towards that but it, no I, I see what ken's saying with how it's that immediate yeah. gratification where it's just yeah this is he, someone did it you did right. it. <laughs> it's the whole it's the whole Bardock thing, like, oh my son, you're the one that's gonna defeat Frieza, that kind of moment. Mm. So after the whole Frieza business, uh he hooks up with Boma, which nice. we don't get to see, which Damn it. fan fiction exists, so check that out. <laughs> Several. Uh the f- one I'd recommend is called Oh no, well uh... <laughs> <laughs> I was hoping you were gonna drop an actual title. I, and I was I, like, I... everybody shut up and let the man speak. <laughs> How do you spell that? I still to this day don't know. How, I can't picture Vegeta getting like sexual with anyone. Do, do you guys? I can't see him being alone in a room with another person that he doesn't want to fight. Which is at least I mean, not like, at this point. Yeah, you like know, later, I, th- obviously. Not but. in a serious story way. I don't see him like, oh, this 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 woman. I don't know. I I don't think it was like a deep. You know, he took her out to TGI Fridays and then Definitely there's a not. romance well, that just, happened. Nothing yeah, like that. Yeah, <laughs> but. Even just a night of passion, I don't know. It's just it's hard for me to see that out of him, but I don't know. Well, you know, he was training and he was sweaty and uh, Bulma must have instigated. Bulma must have been like zip that zip those pants down. And I was like, but she was like, wait, what are you doing? And it's like, don't worry, just let me handle it. I think I the get... same goes for Chi Chi too. Oh mm. yeah, for sure. Yeah. So anyway, now- they make trunks. <laughs> 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 that's the, I think that's the thing that kind of was the my flaw in watching the series is that knowing that Trunks exist, I cared more about Trunks. So by proxy, Vegeta, I was like, "Oh, this is Tr- uh, this is a uh, Trunks' father kind of thing." You know what I mean? I think, especially during this whole Android stuff, that a lot of people are like, "Oh man, Vegeta is the worst in this." And I think there's some bad choice. There's some bad choices the character makes, which like that's part of his charm. But it's this whole through line of this thing of like learning. He has a son, doesn't care about this baby. His son comes from the future who is stronger than him at that point and it's kind of like sets him off to be like it, you know it's his his ego of like well i've got to achieve this i need to mm-hmm. be number one and hating this guy resenting him for whatever and you know continually pushing him away before eventually you know through the arc he uh trains yeah. with him for a year and then fights cell cells doing his thing and then cell comes kicked. back kills trunks yeah he actually ends up caring about his son's death so much like he does he's He's normally yeah. calculating, and he does not give a shit. He's just in there. He's like, "I'm gonna beat that guy." Up that's, that's because that's definitely a, dif- a, dif- a different pride for the end when uh, Trunks is killed to when he first finds out that Trunks is his son. Because he does, he does when he finds out Trunks is his son, is like, "Ah, well, he is my son." Like that. That mm. pride is like, "Oh, if, if he can do this, of course he can." Because I, I'm, I have it in me too. There's that kind of pride. You know what I mean? Mm. Yeah. Uh, Ken, what are your thoughts on on this whole arc of Vegeta here? I love it. I I love the way that Vegeta goes into this arc thinking he has finished his own series called Dragon Ball V. You know, it has ended. (laughs) His his character arc is done. He got Super Saiyan. That he's sold. He can beat any threat that comes his way. And Toriyama, the master of subversion. (laughs) Well, oops, you beat nineteen, and that's going to be about it for a while. That's it. That's it. (laughs) And what an accomplishment! Vegeta having to reckon. Yeah, Vegeta goes off and stands on a rock by himself for a few days and yep, reckons and every, with that every fact AMV and then, from the nineties, two thousands. Yeah, you know, <laughs> crawling in my skin. Yes, Vegeta says, and then, then boom, he goes straight 
and he's bonding with his son and mm -hmm. that's the rest of Vegeta's story that you know even the part where they come out of the room of spirit in time for the first time and Trunks is like oh Goku let me tell you about all this stuff we did and Vegeta's like shut up shut up <laughs> don't say a word to don't him don't tell him this yeah. is like, proprietary information and they don't yeah. get to know this is our thing <laughs> Yeah, it's God, it's so good. I, it's I love awesome. that relationship. And, you know, that grows into his relationship with his actual son, his real <laughs> right, son, right. His, his real son, <laughs> his of time, the, you know, his chronological <laughs> son. Chronologically time and, son then, yeah. and then we see more of that in Super. Um, far be it for me to praise Super, but I, <laughs> right. I do like the way that through line continues into that series. Yeah, mm. man. Yeah, that is that is great. Like you don't really think about that too much. That that that. I mean, I don't know because you just you imagine that in the room spirit of time they're just ignoring each other. But no, they must have you know interact because Vegeta's like he is ta tactical in this in the Namek arc. He would use all everything he has to his advantage to to train specifically in this in this instance. So I know Randy's thinking what I'm thinking. Mm -hmm. In the future Trunks DLC for Kakarot, <laughs> there is a very fleshed out period where Trunks is talking to Bulma, uh, future Bulma, mm -hmm. and he is telling her about his experience in the room of spirit time with no Vegeta. way and you go through and you get to see their conversation that they have and it's really <gasps> touching what? and heartfelt and him being like a father to him play kakarot don't <laughs> Man, please play super. this game now why can are you adding homework to me in so many things <laughs> it's not homework if it's fun oh I, that sounds awesome though there's a lot of good stuff in that game especially for fans that want to experience Little extra things here and there. Yeah, a lot of stuff that wasn't shown. Yeah, exactly. Which sometimes I hate, but some instances it is fun if they do it right. Look, when they do it well, man, then it's yeah. okay. Yeah. And I think they do. So moving on from the whole cell stuff. Well, I mean, we got to talk about how badass he was killing 19 or is it 20? Oh. Or 19? Whatever. Which one? Which one's? It's 19, right, Ken? 19. He kills 19, yeah. The, one, the figure that just came out. I always 20. mix up those two. I just call the other one Jero, but... <laughs> Rips off those arms, uh, yeah. which is uh, pretty impressive. That's what cinched like everyone's everyone who loved Vegeta, uh, who loves Vegeta now. It's because of that scene, probably. That's what started it all. It is pretty badass. I mean, it's shortly followed up by him trying to take on eighteen. That does not go well at right. all for him. But it's God, I don't know. An arm broken. It's fun to see him achieve what he's always wanted, thinking yeah. he's the top of the game and to nothing will ever do better than him. Cocky and rightfully cocky. Yeah. And it's it's, it's fun to watch. But he's still he's still Namek Vegeta deep down. You yeah. still like Trunks who's been reserving grade three Super Saiyan and he's like, I gotta <laughs> let my dad get pet I don't know why that's my Trunks voice, but like, <laughs> like, I got more cigarettes and then he'll get there. Yeah. I gotta let my dad get uh get knocked out before I can go Super Saiyan grade three. <laughs> Uh, Krillin, take his body away. And then so... <laughs> That's it. He, Sean Shovel, that, that happens. And then he goes and he, he just... You, we see why grade three is a bad idea. We we see Goku right. also using that in the in the room of spirit and time with Gohan at the same time, which I think is some of my favorite storytelling in all of yeah. Dragon Ball, the way those two timelines match up. Mm. Anyways. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, we'll, talk, then, we'll, have to, we'll have to bring you back on for that episode. Then we move to Vegeta, Trunks being like, I, I didn't achieve something my father couldn't have i achieved something my knew father it. knew better than to use yeah and like that's like that such, vegeta is still in there yeah mm -hmm. that's such good storytelling too where vegeta doesn't have to say it anyway it, it's just shown through through trunks doing all this it's like no vegeta was smarter than you in that aspect he knew what to do what not to do i think i think trunks says it i believe he does no, i mean really, without, yeah. without vegeta he realizes. himself having to say it like it's not like i would use this formation but it's not gonna work it's just told through trunks's mistakes it's great right corroborated with goku explaining that form to gohan right he's like so i we could also do this but it's a bad bad choice i'm getting that figure soon that figure that figure is coming out ichiban kuchi hell yeah <laughs> sponsored this is just, by so I, I wish <laughs> this is doug's big bad toy store wish list is what this show is now yeah man People who sleep on Vegeta during that whole arc uh, really have it all. I don't wrong. think anyone sleeps through Vegeta. Yeah, that's 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 the peak of uh, Dragon Ball Z specifically in America, isn't it? Cell. A lot of people don't like that whole section of Vegeta because they're like, well, he lets Cell absorb eighteen and he screws everything up, and because of him, Goku died. Like, it's I don't know. People get upset that he's just trying to be Edge Lord. It's like, no, I, there's so much more to that. I see it for like a first time viewing. Mm -hmm. That's, I think, that what you walk away with. But it's when you watch the series or read the series later, you you kind of start piecing together because you have hindsight and 
Yeah. 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 And future sight where you like know where this is going and like, yeah. oh, I can see how this ties into that. So that kind of gives more meaning to this. Yeah. Yeah. And anytime you go back over material, you're discovering stuff you didn't get the first time. Yeah. Right. Right. Because you, stuff, you so stuff makes sense in hindsight. Mm. And I people won't. really don't give Toriyama enough credit. It's always like, he's the guy who forgot about lunch. <laughs> and it's like, no, if you really go back and read Dragon Ball, yeah, there's some gaffes here and there. Mm-hmm. But for the most part, he knew his world that he was in. And he knew his characters and what he was doing. Yeah. Whenever I think of genius, I like that's who I go to. Not genius like as in, I know rocket science, but like genius as in like he knows how to put a story together and do it so well. Definitely hit his stride during those those portions of the story. I think I, I still when I refer to myself, I still do the Super Vegeta pose when I like put my thumb up to my face and just like I'm super Doug. <laughs> I'm Doug. <laughs> I'm Doug. Yeah, <laughs> super <laughs> Doug. It's only to anime fans because otherwise no one else will understand what I'm doing. <laughs> Why are you pointing your head? It's a Japanese thing. Don't worry about it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> wow. So anyway. Uh, after this whole arc, Goku is gone, and I can't remember if this is manga as well, but Vegeta is like, I have no more reason to like keep doing my thing. It's I'm done. Uh, I think that's manga. Okay. Yeah, I'll but, never fight again, I think is the line. Yeah, yeah, right. It's, just, it's okay. wild to see. It's, I mean, at first I'm like, that's dumb. But then I'm thinking about it, I'm like, for Vegeta, I get it, because I think he kind of has that same thing with Goku of like I want to fight the strongest one not because it's fun but just because I don't know to prove he's got to insecurities myself. and he yeah he wants to be number one yeah so if Goku's gone like what am I gonna do even though he just saw Gohan be way stronger <laughs> but he knows Gohan isn't a fighter per se like it's not it would yeah. be a fun match it's no there's no sport in that right which he, he and Ten Shinhan are taking it pretty hard speaking in absolutes. Right. Yeah. Shinhan, I'll never see you I'll again. I'll never see you guys again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We'll probably never see you. Why? We could have we could have barbecues. No. Yeah. yeah. Goku's not here. Why bother? <laughs> He's Damn. the glue that holds this group together. Hey, that's when you find I mean, out for them, your I guess friend group isn't true. as tight. <laughs> uh loses the will to fight. Goku's gone. I'll never fight again. Ah, uh, never mind. He's gonna train with his his son, which I think is great. Yeah. Like when you see that, is it him wanting a training buddy? Or is it like this is my son and he's got to be just as good as daddy and I'm going to train him myself. Like what's your what's your take on I that think whole it's situation? more I think it must have been like Trunks just kind of coming up to him and just like can we do this can we do that training wise or fighting wise and he's mm. like all right then he like kind of refines his love for it. Yeah, it's you want to be like your dad. Like when I was a yeah. kid, my dad wore glasses and I didn't. So I would take laser pointers and <laughs> you know, shine them in my eye. eyes to degrade <laughs> my vision. And well, eventually, you know, I'm still wearing glasses wow. now. <laughs> this dedication. You win. <laughs> uh, eventually finds out, hey, Goku's coming back for the 25th Budokai. So obviously he's got to get in there. He's got to fight Goku. But then all this boo nonsense happens, and he's not having any of that. He's only got one day, and he is hyper focused. He's yeah. like, "Damn it, I'm fighting this dude." What a subversion! <laughs> and, like from going to a tournament to this whole boo arc thing, right? So anyway, he takes advantage of Babidi's need for assistance, so he can get just that little bit more of an edge over Goku, so he can get his fight out. They have it out, and then boo shows up and i'm not sure what he thought was going to happen but he's like oh, okay well i'm gonna knock goku out and i'm gonna go take care of this menace well he must have really not thought much of of well boo since kaioshin was just like these mm. guys are so scary and then they at the end of, ended up being nothing so he just probably thought no that's fine i'll take care of it i think there's more to it than he just wanted to get more powerful to beat Goku. So before, so earlier today, I sent Randy a timeline <laughs> of oh, Dragon <wow>. Ball <laughs> with Vegeta's age at different parts of the series. And mm. I think that when we hit the Boo arc, Vegeta is 44 years old. Okay. And generally, that is around the age when <gasps> men start to have a midlife, midlife crisis. Midlife crisis. No way. And Vegeta had really let himself mellow out become just this guy who hangs out at his wife's house, which is a weird way to say that. I don't his know. wife's house. <laughs> it's weird, but it's true. It's yeah. super true. Uh, he's got this kid who just likes to play and wants to go on roller coasters. He probably doesn't he's have a like, job. He's become... Vegeta suffers from toxic cyanity. <laughs> and he has become this kind of really docile person when his whole life he's, he's been pushed in another way. Yeah. Like this destroyer, this guy who, uh, who takes things over over and is a driving force and he's just become relaxed commits genocide on, on every other sunday like it's and then it's he, wild yeah 
And here comes Bobbity, and Bobbity's like, "Hey, Vegeta, would you like a convertible?" And Vegeta's <laughs> like, "Hell yeah, hell yeah, <laughs> and, <laughs> yeah!" And takes it as this kind of out rims, to be- and we got a deal. Yeah, to become the the Vegeta that he was as a younger man, and, yeah, because and it's not something I, he, he I, can I like, like to read that. It's not something he can like, just turn on and off. Like he just can't be that person again. He's he's like you said, he's become docile. So it, it takes Bobbity's yeah. magic to unlock that again. And, yeah, and I, I, this might be anime only because they they do draw out. In fact, they they only show you the Goku Vegeta fight in the anime. But I believe <laughs> there's parts where he's talking to Goku about like. He's going through his thought process of why he did yeah, this. Yeah, yeah, it's a famous. And part of scene. it is, yeah, that he became a little baby boy. Yeah, little baby he boy. Wants, wants to go back to the old I days. I want to of... be cold and ruthless, like the saying I was before, or something, something like that. Yeah. <laughs> it's a great moment, and I, I think you know, Doug, relatable. When you, when you guys were doing the movie eight review, and Doug, mm-hmm. you were talking to Yummy Pixels about Broly's PTSD and stuff, and it's right. like at the end of the day, these are cartoon characters, right? <laughs> but <laughs> yes. You know, we are people, and so we, we see them through the lens of real people, and I think that this is just another interesting way to look at Vegeta, specifically in this moment of the Boo yeah. arc, as, as a man going through a midlife, midlife crisis. legit midlife crisis. Yeah, yeah. And I think, you know, around the time that this chapter was out, um, Toriyama was 38, about to be 39. Oh. And so you have to imagine that I'm not like, I'm not saying Toriyama sat down and was like, I'm going to draw <laughs> Vegeta having a midlife crisis, you know, but... <laughs> right. That's got to be somewhere, subconsciously or not, it in resonates Toriyama's with mind himself. around that time. Yeah. yeah. Just to take stuff from what you know. Right? Yeah. It's, uh, I think it's a great way to look at that, because it really does... I mean, he even says it himself, like, it's because I want to become... I miss who I was back then. And I don't know. We're all 35-year-old men. <laughs> I think we could all kind of relate to, you know, that. I mean... I just I just had my birthday last week and like I had a day like I was like I'm gonna go take a walk and think about where I was. Really? <laughs> All right, Doug, let's sing to Randy. Oh Randy? no! Happy, Happy yeah. birthday, birthday to you. We're out. We're all out of order. I forget <laughs> yeah, but the lag is <laughs> real. <laughs> Hey, look, it's the thought that counts. And you, Happy birthday, and I man. appreciate that. <laughs> You'll get there one day. We'll or send not, you a naked Vegeta <laughs> in the mail. Oh, all right. <laughs> That's a personalized gift right there. <laughs> it's going to be it one was, of your figures. One yeah, of the triples that you have of it. Like, I took off all the clothes. I repainted yeah. them. I, I, bought, I bought a bootleg on accident. So <laughs> you get to have it. But I remember so, um, listening to the Kanzenji podcast way back when, when they were talking about Vegeta and the whole majin of it. And just the meaning of the word. And it always stuck with me that Mike was like, oh, the 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 ma could always could stand for magic man. So he's just Magic Man Vegeta. So I was like, that's the best nickname. It doesn't have to be Majin. It's just Magic Man Vegeta. From Bad Man to Magic Man. <laughs> to Magic Man. <laughs> magic that's character Mike. development. <laughs> magic yeah, Mike yeah, Vegeta. If Ma can mean like demon evil, mm-hmm. can mean bad. Mm-hmm. So Bad Man, Ma Bad Jin, Man. There it is. Mm-hmm. Bad Think Man. about it. You know? It's crack so great. the code. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's it. We figured it out. So he has this midlife crisis. I'm just going to say that's canon. He's having a midlife crisis. Wants to go back to being what he was. And then he realizes, oh. like, oh, man, I really I really screwed the pooch on this one. There's a big, strong guy. My son's over there. So he goes over. Obviously, he's like, oh, it's a strong guy. I get to fight him. And then realizes he's not going to be able to, to do this. And having that moment where he's alone with Trunks and, like, man, that hits. <laughs> like, every time I see it. That's it's one good. of my favorite it's moments. It's really good. There's a figure of that, too, but I didn't get it. I missed out. <laughs> Sorry, it's a figure of everything, Randy. <laughs> just so you know, I know they've been making figures for forty goddamn years. Key so moment, man. Figure where Vegeta's karate chopping Goten in the neck. <laughs> oh yeah, I want that one. Yeah. Oh no, he does that to Trunks. I want that figure, and then he, he like punches, punches Goten in the gut. I think. Yeah. 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 He should have done the same knee strike he did to Gohan. On the Ooh, oh, they exactly. all got a hit. <laughs> yeah. Wow, he beats children all, right. all the time. Doug, he we loves gotta it. call Ben Presto and we yeah, yeah, we gotta figures, get, get some ideas for them. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's a great but, moment. I, I really don't like the. I don't know how I feel about the fact that Vegeta has his mind still. It's just because he's super strong. Is that was that the reasoning that he was able to like let go of Bobby's control? I figure he's just a stubborn, strong-willed dude, and even if he's under control, he doesn't give a hoot. Yeah, I feel like that's too edgelord. <laughs> you know what I mean? I oh, Doug, I, I want to talk about the super manga. You can, <laughs> but I can't. <laughs> we'll, get there. No. we'll have a moment later in the show. We'll say, Doug, take off your earmuffs. Put it in your notes. Yeah, and we'll just wave when you can come back. 
Sounds okay, well, good. I'll just say this. That Vegeta still being able to keep his mind and having basically his wild side unlocked is also kind of future echoes for something that happens to him Really? Later. That's kind of mm. cool. Dang it, Ken. <laughs> Stop making me... <laughs> Read those four pages at a time, Doug. <laughs> You'll get through it eventually. Ken is People should know Doug is now of, reading the yeah. manga. Ken is sending yeah. me four pages a day so that I can <laughs> read, which is my pace. <laughs> I'll get there in a few years. It. I've been trying it for two years. I bought him, bought this man a tablet. Still didn't do it. Ken you never said it was for the like, purpose of reading you, the manga. <laughs> let me show, give you four JPEGs a day. And that was apparently how you do it. I started reading Berserk on the manga, and then I got like to volume one, and I'm like, oh, okay, cool. I'll, I'll continue this later, and I never did, but I want to. I'm deflated. <laughs> so, besides just hugging Trunks, he blows himself up, and yeah. I just, like, I want to highlight just how the anime handles it. There's no musical outro to that episode. It's just yeah. the sound of that explosion. Fantastic. Oof, man. It's and intense. The conversation he has with Piccolo for That's my favorite. Oh, before that, yes. yeah, where he's like... Will I see Kakarot again? And Pickle's like, nah, dude, you're nah. you're going to hell. Yeah. <laughs> and that doesn't change his mind. Like he, yeah, it's a painful the... gut punch, but he's like, yeah, yeah, I'm still doing it. That's what makes Vegeta so admirable in that in that instance where he's just like, Oh, I'm not gonna I'm I'm going to hell probably. Oh well. Yep. I did I, what I, I did. I, I probably deserve it, but it's time to do right by these kids. Right? Those Namekians never came back and that's <laughs> on me. <laughs> yeah, they never did. <laughs> that poor town. <laughs> right? Oh, uh, I don't like to think about that, because then that makes me upset at Vegeta. It's real uh, life, man. But I'm not here to cancel Vegeta. Uh, <laughs> so he sacrifices himself. But then the whole Boo thing continues to spiral out of control. Even the other world <laughs> is like, we got to send somebody. Vegeta, God, we didn't cleanse your soul or anything yet. You you get on in there, bud. See what get you can do. Get on there. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, and he fuses with Goku. It took, takes some you know arm twisting here and there before he gives in. Because like, well, it's this or just be erased from existence, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Goes for it. It's Vegito time. That stops. Yo, shut takes out. <laughs> takes out. Starts fighting Kid Buu. Holds him off while Goku's charging some stuff. Yeah. There's. Uh, I just wrote it here. Oh yeah, he gets wished back accidentally <laughs> because he tells him to wish back everybody who is good before this whole Boo thing happens. Not even thinking of himself. Himself. And then his yeah. halo disappears, and wow. it's like, oh. This super godly being considers you a good guy now. Right, like, right, right. I think with putting that into what happened just two days ago <laughs> in this arc of like, no, man, well, I'm crazy. I, I, I hate being this person. You have to take into, in, now. into consideration his final atonement of him blowing himself up like that itself, even knowing he was going to go to hell or whatever. Yeah. That's enough to consider him a good guy, like especially in, our, right. in, our, in my book, too. But I'm saying his reaction to that fact of like, okay. This extra dimensional, this extra dimensional being now yeah. considers me to be a good guy. And just like yesterday, I was like, fuck that. Now he's yeah. like, yep. <laughs> it makes him think too, like, oh, wow. Mm-hmm. I mean, of course, he is like, ah, I don't agree, but whatever. <laughs> well, and it, it's played so quick and for such a it joke because it's Goku is like, oh, hey, I guess you're not a bad guy, Vegeta. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. But I don't know. I think it holds some significance, which is, you know, like, oh, he accepts it. He doesn't go off. He's like, I got to go find that wizard. I'm going to wish him back and tell him, make me more of a bastard. <laughs> God damn it. And do it to my family, too. <laughs> make them evil. I'll take him with me. It'll be great. Good family bonding. Uh, and then the whole you are number one Kakarot. Like, that's it. He's like, yeah, I recognize you're you're the real man here. Uh, I don't know. It's good stuff. What do you guys think about the whole boot arc and Vegeta's time? Uh, post obviously blowing himself up and all that. I think Doug's crying. I think he was really touched by it. No, I got something in my eye. The way Mr. Satan does, I, you would legit be getting me crying here on the podcast right now. So, but I, I can, you know, I'll, you know, keep it manly for Vegeta. Mm. <laughs> um, the way that Vegeta starts like calling out to the people of Earth and in his own way, in his own yeah, way, but yeah. He, but I, again, this is the master tactician Vegeta. Vegeta's like, hey, use the Dragon Balls. Yeah. And like, but we can't. Use the Namekian Dragon Balls. <laughs> <Yeah>. Use those. <laughs> and here are the wishes that you're going to make. Do that. And then, okay, well, what are we going to do? You're going to use the Genki Dama. The, this attack that owned me Never, that <laughs> a long me, time yeah. ago. Yeah. <laughs> you're going to use it. And then the people of Earth are going to do this. And it's like, oh, God. If Vegeta, like, somehow stepped out of the manga and said, here are the thematic beats that we really should hit to tie the <laughs> yeah, whole series the whole together. The whole series together. Mm-hmm. What, a, what a fantastic moment. Yeah. I think I didn't yeah. realize until like, you mentioned it, Ken, that Vegeta really is the plan maker. Like, he's the one that's the tactician. And, like, yeah, Goku's just the bumbling, like, yeah. 
yeah, I'll fight this and this, but Vegeta's really there to, to you know, get shit done. It's such an impressive thing. Like you said, it's like he stepped out. He's like, these are the, the plot beats and the themes that we got to tie everything together. Like, damn it, Ken. Your <laughs> Dragon, interest, Dragon Balls. Gagidama. Your insight into this shit. Oh, <laughs> makes everything that much better. Vegeta uh, owns, dude. Vegeta yeah. does own. Yeah. So here's a question. We're going to deviate one way or another. We got Super, we got GT. What one do we want to do first? Now Is I know there chronologically much in super, GT to but. talk about with. Well, I guess a little bit, but a little bit, just the tiniest bit. I th- I think. Uh, well, we also have the twenty eighth Tenkaichi Budokai. Okay, right. He does a little bit there where he bemoans the fact that their children don't want to fight. <laughs> <laughs> That's typical adulthood, right there. Like, yeah, these this generation these days. I tried to raise a mini me. <laughs> It's not working. <laughs> I had two chances and I didn't do it. If we ignore the Kanzenban ending, then we leave Vegeta in a really nice place. Because mm. the Kanzenban ending kind of changes that whole thing. No longer is he number one. He's like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take yeah. that. I don't know how I feel. I, th- I think I like that in retrospect for everything that we got. Sin- well, I guess Super takes place before that, so not really. But oh yeah, you get all into that. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think. Are you, Doug, are you okay if we talk a little bit of a super here? Sure. Let me turn down well, my I'd microphone. actually like to touch on GT real quick. Oh, then okay, let's do yeah. GT, and then we'll do uh, super Might as well. Might as well. Yeah. You no, know, I say this full disclosure. My viewing of GT is bits and pieces here and there. But okay. Vegeta in that feels like such a natural extension because he's just like a lame cringe dad <laughs> yeah. it's so good he dotes over his daughter which we get you know echoes of that in super too and it's just he's just a lame dude <laughs> and it's great he's got a <laughs> dumb mustache uh, hey. and then he shaves it off he shaves it off and he's like look at me and they're like no this is worse and still then, doesn't work for you <laughs> yeah i yeah he doesn't i don't think like you said doug he does stuff in that one like Kind of, but that's also might be because I've only seen GT through like twice. But yeah, he's got a mustache. He really dotes on his daughter. He's kind of just like, I don't know, a, a domestic dude at that point. Yeah, I, I think part of it's just the, the you know, Toei like poking fun at him. Like, look how much he's fallen. But also it's like that's realistic to what would happen to the character in the situation that he's been through. Mm-hmm. And, and then that final part in episode 64 where Pan is, I guess she's holding his Goku's gi or yeah. something. He's ripped off clothes. And Vegeta's like cherish that. Yeah. And yeah. God. Oh, man. Man. <laughs> uh, there's also just like the one line when he's fighting Super 17, because like Goku's not there. He's dealing with other stuff at the time. I can't remember. I think it's like Cell and, and Frieza. And he's taking on 17, and he kind of like proclaims, like, Goku's not here. I'm the protector of Earth. Like, oh, wow. shit. He's taking he on this. That? Wow. Yeah. It's uh, it's pretty good. I like that. He immediately gets his shit kicked in. Because uh, <laughs> at it's least Goku he time. Says it. Yeah, because it's Goku time. But I don't know, man. It's it feels cool to see that like the complete end. Like you know, he's a man in his what sixties at that point. Mm-hmm. He is fifty nine. Fifty nine. Okay. Thank you. 60, Ken. Sixty. Sixty after uh, you know, because the Black Star Dragon Balls take a whole year. So <laughs> after that, he's sixty. But before before baby, he's fifty nine. Okay. Well, this is during Super Seventeen, so he would have been okay. sixty. So sixty. Yeah. Yeah. And then, uh, I mean, he doesn't really do much because he gets, you know, taken over by Baby. And, like, what's what he going to do there, really? Yeah, what a weird uh, choice. Uh, he's just going to, like, look really hella cool. Oh, me? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But that's just his body. That's not it his yeah. person. It doesn't feel like Vegeta yeah, at body. that point. It doesn't feel like what Vegeta a... at all. <laughs> no. Uh, shows up for the Shadow Dragon fights, and he's like, yo, check it. I had my woman make me this thing. Check this out. These <laughs> 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 flux eight. waves. Shoot me. Turns into a big ape, and then he starts, like, rampaging a bit. They're like, oh, no. <laughs> he doesn't have his uh, his senses. He's like, uh, guys, remember? <laughs> okay. I had that way back in the day. Like, just no problem. Kidding. I do love that he grabs <laughs> Goku again and, like, his hands just reminiscing. <laughs> like, he had him his hands back then in the day. is like, great. Ah, psych. And then, <laughs> and then yeah, it's yeah. so good. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great joke, guys. Whoever wrote that, <laughs> my hat's off to you. That was great. Uh, and then, you know... Fighting side by side with Goku is Super Saiyan 4. It looks rad. They fuse. So Says awesome. goodbye to Goku. The cherish that for the gi. Yeah. Man, it's good. I'm excited Wait, so, to rewatch GT. Are you? <laughs> oh, God. Yeah. Are we doing that? You might be doing that. I think we I think we as a team yeah. should work together and watch GT. I guess we are running out of ideas. to do it. There's a certain other podcast out there. Yeah. I've been waiting. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> what is, when did they start the GT review of awesomeness? <laughs> it's not over yet. Oh, no, it's not. <laughs> I don't even think they're done with the first arc. But 
we got to take up the mantle. Somebody's got to do this. And Someone's got it. it. <laughs> you have to do. You have to SVU. you. <laughs> Ken will be shared back and forth between both podcasts to talk about the same episodes of GT. <laughs> there you go. No. Wow. <laughs> there is a hell. <laughs> Uh, any other thoughts on GT Vegeta for you guys? Other than, like, he looks rad. He's got leather pants. <laughs> Just fucking leather and pants. <laughs> <laughs> it looks kind of cool in his in his Super Saiyan 4 form, but, man, I don't know. I wish his hair... How old was his father? Was King Vegeta before he died? He wasn't 60, I guess. Not that old, but... I'm just... Why didn't his hair retain the same way his father's hair retained the shape? His mom, you know, jeans and... Right, mm-hmm. right, yeah. These are cartoons, Doug. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, I'm sorry. We've been talking about it for an hour and a half about one character in particular. (laughs) Uh, Let's talk a little bit about Super, and then Doug will will let you know when we're going to get to stuff that you have not read yet. Use your famous little little clicker, and I'll I'll see it. I mean, you've seen the eh, you've seen the anime, right? Go ahead and mute me because I'm going to start singing in in the background, and then okay, you don't want to talk about anything prior to. my Bulma. Yeah, my no, Bulma. Oh, I, thought, I thought you guys were going to... Uh, I thought you were just going super... Uh, no, no, actually, yeah. That, that is good shit. Yeah, let's talk about that. Okay, we're going to keep you around for a little bit of that. Cool, cool. Um, yeah, brought up My Bulma during the whole Beerus thing. He knows Great who moment. Beerus is, and it's like, oh, I got to appease this guy, because otherwise none of us are surviving this, which, tactician, <laughs> he knows that he can't beat him in a fight, so he's going to do... He's going to appease him. Awesome. And it, it's also Vegeta has something to protect. Yes, yeah, and uh, something to lose. When you guys, uh, you know, I, I'm I'm listening to the podcast you guys have been doing. I've been <laughs> yeah. going back from the beginning, mm-hmm. and so a lot of the stuff you guys are saying about some of those movies is still very fresh in my mind. But Doug, there's something extremely oh, no. salient you said I hate when you do. No, this is good. This, <laughs> this is, is good. good. Okay, this sure. is good. I'm praising you. <laughs> in movie 13, when Vegeta is protecting those people in that building, you said this is Vegeta, and he has become human, and wow. that is the Vegeta that we we get in battle of gods is that's like I, I yeah i freak out over my wife specifically but mm-hmm. i'm protecting <laughs> this planet this planet yeah yeah from this specifically a planet destroying god <laughs> who has shown up <laughs> and must be appeased did i say like like this is him being an earthling like he's a human slash earthling now like that's yeah i think that'd be yeah good job doug of, of back then <laughs> <laughs> Pat yourself on the back <laughs> yeah it's great i mean he's He's actually become the protector of the earth because Goku's not there. Kaio is like, hey, Beerus is coming. Do what you can, man. <laughs> and he's like, I I got it. I will yeah. I will do this thing. I don't know how I feel about the flashback of seeing his dad being subservient to him. Like it feels very Rakani. Well, without changing stuff, but it just feels like I don't know. Like like the the mystery is ruined by showing the mystery that I always mm. hate. I don't know. I think that it just paints I think it's looking at it through current Vegeta's eyes. If that Vegeta were a, a, a young, I don't mm-hmm. know. I, just a thing that popped in my head. I'm like, well, that's not who he was. Well, I guess that then. doesn't really bother me as much as what what was like. I think Frieza. When Frieza says it, like, oh, my father said to watch out for Majin Buu and Beerus. Those two characters only, and it's just like, okay. <laughs> well, Frieza was given the order to blow up Planet Vegeta from Beerus, as we right. know, and we've seen in. Super that's, that's, Broly. That's what Raditz and, said. <laughs> and so, I mean, Vegeta doesn't know that at this point, but in that flashback is part showing us Vegeta's uh, wariness of Beerus, but also kind of the bad taste that was put in Beerus's mouth by this uh, Vegeta the third, I guess. Right, right. <laughs> you know, going forward, he's protecting these people. Beerus slaps Bulma, and that puts Vegeta over the edge, which... I believe, don't they even specifically say that he's was stronger than Goku in that moment? To you know, even though I he, think they say know, that, yeah, he's not strong enough to be Beerus, but like, dang, the desire to get revenge for his wife, yeah, it's big. Put and, him up to that, yeah. It's it's a fantastic display of just how far Vegeta's come, and I don't know, I love it. I love it for what it is. We we also did skip straight past the OVA. We did. That's right. Uh, yeah. Say say informal wear. And things like that. Oh, yeah. yeah. Which I love that line because uh, he's like, this is Cyan formal wear. And Goku's like, well, then so is I, this. So is this. <laughs> like, yeah. okay, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. The way that Mizawa delivers that line makes me feel it. Like, he really does feel that way. <laughs> like It makes it, it makes his more, more special. Fighting his church. Yeah, it makes him more special, I think, in the Boo arc where he's wearing not the armor and just like a, like a regular ass t-shirt and sweatpants or whatever. Because that's because he was forced to because of the tournament rules. And so that's that's another casual story, like a uh, storytelling way of just making him change outfits for once. 
It's great. Mm. But the way that Vegeta is so polite with Gure. And, yes. Yeah. Yeah. After he's talking about how science can like hide their battle powers or whatever, and then it's Goku who walks past him, and Goku's like, let me show you what Check he's talking this out. about. And Vegeta yeah. like doesn't say, like, no, Kakarot, I'll be the one to show my brother my power. You know, he lets Goku do yeah. this. He's like, feeling he secure a, in his own yeah, power. Exactly. Yeah. He he acknowledges Goku and he's he knows where he's at and he's fine with it's it. So and, great. Yeah. He's just a total It's, it's like Vegeta has like a beyond some pride in Goku. Yeah. Yes. Hundred percent. Great. Uh you're right, we did skip over that. My bad. And also getting into an eating fight with Goku over him eating his <laughs> like, oh man, you guys are best friends. You don't like that to was admit my it, but sushi. you are. I thought we were friends. <laughs> yeah, they're just like two friends who are really good at a fighting game and they don't want to lose to the other one. <laughs> yeah. It's the same kind of thing. That's awesome. Yeah. Uh so he loses to Beerus. All that other stuff happens. He, you know, willingly helps Goku achieve a new level of power, which I mm-hmm. think is another thing of like, yeah, man, you know what? I'm okay with it. Holding two people's hands. That's true. There's a lot of hand holding. And that. he lets his son do it, too. Right. What true. do you mean he lets his son do it? Trunks has to give his his light into Goku as well. Mm-hmm. Oh, but you, you think Vegeta of past wouldn't have let Trunks do it? Yeah. I mean, no, I mean, I'm like... Early, early Vegeta. It's just like, it's more of being inclusive and being like, my son and I, oh, okay, my okay. family lineage will help you, Goku. Gotcha. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that is good. I do like that. Uh, after this, he talks Whis into letting him train under him. He's like, I gotta figure something out. <laughs> that is good. It's a great episode of the Super it Anime. Is, yeah. Episode uh, 16 or something? Yeah, somewhere around there. It's in the AJ Cup. And and uh goes uh to train and it's really great he's working hard he's putting in the work he's like i don't want to do the hand holding thing anymore i'm gonna do this on my own (laughs) so achieving super saiyan blue i gotta say like he didn't do a lot in the resurrection f section and i was like what's vegeta doing this whole time and then he finally gets in he's like all right my turn (laughs) and it's just like the biggest stomp (laughs) that freeze has ever had so great. man that's good also in the super anime Getting five for five and clearing out all of the Ginyu. All the force. Ginyu, yeah. <laughs> it feels good. <laughs> but Jesus needed to a win. Complete the set. <laughs> I think the optimal way to watch Resurrection F is in a theater with with specifically dubbies. Because that moment <laughs> when Vegeta transforms and has this cathartic release on Frieza, the yeah. way that theater popped it was it was intense it was unlike anything else yeah that's what makes that movie and that whole arc i think worth it (laughs) is just that even you know like i i was i saw that in a theater as well and that i granted i did see it dubbed yeah that moment was like electric (laughs) like everybody was into that that was happening makes me sad he didn't get you know the finish i mean obviously story reasons goku is the only one that knows because you know got reset yeah but like oh man i think it was so great that that it was the surprise he would have done it he would have done it yeah i'm 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 surprised they kept it a secret that he had the the blue form because it i think all the trailers had goku going blue and that was a spoiler in and of itself because no one's gone blue before that was the first Mm. time so i was so mad because i'm trying i'm like avoiding trailers avoiding as much as i can to like not get the spoiler but then i see super saiyan blue goku i'm like okay that's that's it and then vegeta comes and transforms what that's it's (laughs) so great it's a good subversion even though they had to they have to show it you know marketing is like show everybody everything so that way they get excited and have to well they had they double they they twisted on me where i'm like oh i thought the goku blue was the big the big twist but no it's the vegeta blue that's the twist Mm -hmm. it's good stuff Mm mm-hmm Universe six, uh, still some stuff that Doug has is in the know about. Vegeta goes uh, barely to go do this tournament, and I think he becomes a little uh, a mentor to to Kaba, and I think that's uh, that's pretty sweet. That I moment like that. is pretty sweet. Yeah, uh, Ken, your thoughts? I mean, it's I can't really remember everything else that happens in that whole section. A lot of this super later super stuff like that I haven't experienced multiple times, but. Yeah, dude, you couldn't pay me to rewatch Super. So uh, <laughs> I uh, I have vague memories of this stuff, but I couldn't even tell you if Vegeta clues Goku in on like what Hit is doing or, or what Frost was. I don't remember how Vegeta was engaged in, in that mm. conversation. But yeah. to me, that, that arc for Vegeta is all about his relationship with Kaba. Yeah. And mm-hmm. yeah, it's, it's great that 
I remember when that happened, right? Everyone wanted to see like, oh, dude, we're going to go to Universe 6. We're going to see Sadala. Yeah. We're going to mm-hmm. get like this huge lore expansion. But now we'll teeter Nothing. around with Goku Black and then do another tournament. <laughs> Whoopee. Um, so we didn't, we got a little bit more of the Vegeta Kaba interaction in the Tournament of Power, but it I, I don't think it was what anyone was hoping for. No, no. So I no. think it was better done in that first encounter than anything really. It's a nice character moment, but the narrative of it never really pays off. Yeah. Because yeah. like, like you said, I don't remember it as much as I do the original source material, but it's just, it's a good moment for him to be the Prince of Saiyans again, where he's just actually mentoring an actual Saiyan and making sure they're on the right lineage, they're on the right path. Mm. Yeah. Uh, sermon, uh, well, I guess the Zamas Goku Black stuff. All I really remember about this is you know back and forth going through time and gotta go fight him okay that didn't work we'll try this and vegeta training for it and i remember him training hardcore and then stomping black which was rad oh yeah yeah like punching him to the ground and just repeatedly smacking him down mm. that was good moment. but i don't remember yeah, you, you have you have you might have a kakarot's body but you haven't lived in it you haven't breathed in it as long as he has or whatever it was, it was <laughs> you, a good moment you haven't breathed it like i have <laughs> like um, i have Explore it in more intimate ways than you ever will. I've been wanting to at punch the beginning this, of this At the beginning of this arc, when Trunks shows up uh, in the present and Goku Black shows up. And this is anime only, Doug, by the way. <laughs> Goku Black shows up in the present and briefly has a fight with Goku. And Goku and Vegeta are like, is that like how strong Goku Black is? And Trunks is like, well, actually, he has a little, he's a little bit stronger than when I fought him. And Vegeta's like, oh, yeah, all right. Uh, Kakarot's way, power, more, way stronger, way stronger than, that. than that. And by the way, so am I. <laughs> We've got nothing to worry about. And he just about. has this, like, yeah, this very calming version of Vegeta. And, That's and awesome. then he goes through again, and he trains his son some more. And he's like, yeah. why are you still using grade three? <laughs> and, That's a great moment, too, when they're just training them two again. And he's, like, rev- revving them up. It's great. I totally forgot about that. I don't remember it at all. <laughs> Even you bring it up, I'm like, mm, I don't remember. I think remember. Trunks goes well, it, like it, Super Saiyan 2, I think, to show him. It's always stuck in my mind because there's the, when Trunks is asking Vegeta, he after Vegeta explains that both he and Goku are way stronger than Goku Black at that point, Trunks is like, what What happened <laughs> while well, I was gone? And there's a shot like looking up at Vegeta drawn by Tate, I think. And Vegeta's like, well, a lot. And it's just like that scene. I love the way Vegeta looks in that scene, and so that that moment has always stuck with me. Oh, so that's nice! Why I, I had that off the cuff. Yeah, forget Good stuff. I just remember the the grassy woods where it's like, oh, we're we're not in a desolate apocalyptic, post apocalyptic world right now. It's colorful for a change, right? Uh, Tournament of Power. Oh boy! I feel like for Vegeta, this one sucks <laughs> because especially later on when he gets his. Super Saiyan Blue evolved thing and is kind of just does yeah, the blue arc again. Lame transformation. I mean, I kind of li- if it was drawn better. It's, it's just shir- he's just shirtless. In. It's like the the no, transformation requires like shirtless. Su- it's Super Vegeta again, but his hair is blue, and I right. like that. It's got contacts in or whatever. His pupils are showing. Ken's the got manga. Something to say. The manga handles that part a little bit differently. But first of all, guys, we're skipping straight past Brawl and Vegeta's anxiety oh my God. over oh, yeah. Come on, the birth of his Randy, daughter. What are you doing? And, and Goku's like, hey, I need you to fight in this tournament with me. And Vegeta says, no, I'm going to miss the birth of my daughter. Wow. <laughs> Which, like, you think, go, go back to Cell and yeah. tell, you, tell yourself that this is the way Vegeta would be turning down a fight. He wasn't there for mm, Trunks' for birth, like I'm that. sure. Yeah. You know, and yeah, you'd be reading fanfics that would be Vegeta would be punching the fetus, you know, and <laughs> that's the way that you would think about Vegeta back then. But no, I wish Vegeta this is was like the reason that fans loved him, the, the you know, the ones that are like the fangirls of him. But I don't think it is. I think they are just like fangirling over the bad boy Vegeta. You know what I mean? But this this really like domesticated Vegeta is what men should aspire to be. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yes, the, the, we got a pod, the podcast for men. <laughs> <laughs> Domesticated men. <laughs> yeah. Domesticated men who care about their daughters. Non-to- <laughs> non-toxic masculinity, Vegeta. <laughs> but but then that, that leads to such a great, like, Toriyama moment of Whis just being like, okay, well, boop, here's your daughter. <laughs> and, wow. I don't, and, like, I don't think Vegeta, I like that. It's funny, but it's, <laughs> come on. And Vegeta wanting to call her, what, like, Shalot or Cashalot or oh, some, really? some weird oh. some Saiyan name, right? vegetable based Saiyan yeah, name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Bulma's like, nope, sorry, bra. Boop. Here's the birth certificate <laughs> with her name on it. And it's, 
He didn't even get to name one child. This is clearly no. her. Oh my no. god, yeah. Trunks and Brock. He did not. It, it is funny that it takes it back to the roots of it being a, a gag manga, but it just feels kind of like uh, it doesn't mesh in this vibe that we're in now with Dragon Ball. But if you go back and look at the, ga- the gag manga ness of it in the beginning, it fits. Bra was just born, right. just popped. Now I'm thinking GT post everything. He's on his deathbed to his, like, I don't know son or like grandson or whatever you fucking name that kid but after me because i didn't get to name any of my children <laughs> they're gonna from name now it on vegeta jr it'll still have an underwear name but they'll be like don't worry this is polish for cucumber <laughs> oh, okay <laughs> yeah uh I, I so the tournament of power i think the big issue with vegeta is that due to the nature of how w- the tournament of power was was just like every episode was basically the same thing <laughs> you know yeah Here's a fight. The fight's over. Someone got eliminated. Here's a fight. The fight. And so anytime we saw Vegeta, he was bouncing back bef- between should I be stronger than Kakarot or not? And wow, it it became tiresome. That whole arc is tiresome. Yeah, Doug, I, I forget. I do think it's better in the it. manga. Okay, good. It's shorter. Yeah, it's shorter. It's shorter. Good. I there forget is all one of it. Just really I think I purge it from my mind. There is one really bad Vegeta moment in it in which he unlocks uh, Blue Evolution. They don't ever call it that in the manga. Mm-hmm. They don't call it that in the show either. No. But uh, but he goes on this long spiel about how everyone else is like a bunch of like pansies compared to him. And then he unlocks. They say like, oh, your form looks different or, or something like that. Uh-huh. I mean, you're, it's black and white, Doug. So you, what can you do? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you uh, so that, much. The, the speech that Vegeta was, it gives is so bad that I remember at the time I went through and I did a manga edit where I rewrote you that rewrote part. it? Because <laughs> nice. I hated it so much. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah, I get I, it. I, I, I want to see how the manga treats it differently because just from what I've read, it's snippets, snippets here and there. It's like, yeah, it's handled a lot better with more care. I just think in general, that's a trash arc. Yeah, <laughs> just every 10 seconds, it's just going back to someone who's already out of bounds and just like getting their reaction shot. <gasps> oh my God. Oh man. I can't believe Goku is this strong. It's, it's so annoying. It's too much. A lot of padding. What I do like though is that Vegeta doesn't chase after Ultra Instinct. Yeah. Well, there is that one episode where he's like, I'm going to just stand here and I'll, I'm going to take some punches and that I'm sure will do it. <laughs> Am I remembering that right? <laughs> I don't remember that at Dude, all. No, uh, I have a fever dream of maybe you might be planting some like Mandela effect in my mind or something. <laughs> it feels right, but I, I, I'm, not just sure, the manga. I'm not going to double check. <laughs> <Different. laughs> yeah. Shout yeah. us out in the tweets and the comments, whatever the hell you want to do and tell us that we were wrong about it. That's fine by me. <laughs> So I do like that because that echoes, um, and I, I've been saying echoes a lot this Have podcast, you? but I've caught myself. <laughs> I think that was number four. Uh, but You're it's, an echo of an echo. It reflects there you go. what happens wow. later uh, in Super with Vegeta in, you know, whatever uh, Vegeta's doing when he's not doing Ultra Instinct. Okay, mm-hmm. cool, cool. Uh, after the Tournament of Power, uh, we get Broly and Vegeta's there. Yeah, he gets to be cocky again for, for a time. Right? I mean, he gets to be the first one to, to take him on, which I think is nice. That's nice of Goku, because yeah. normally, like, I don't know. Nice I feel Goku. like... <laughs> well, I'm just thinking about the Frieza fight, where he didn't really get to do much, and Goku's like, ah, I get to fight him. I want to show him the cool new thing that we can do. <laughs> well, largely, it would have worked out. I mean, Vegeta's read on the situation was, this guy can't even go Super Saiyan. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so I'm just going to kill him and be done with it. Mm-hmm. And th- I think that's an appropriate way for him to have read that. He had no idea. He hadn't <laughs> right? seen movie eight yet. He didn't know what was coming. <laughs> and it's just, it's, it's not true. his fault that, that Broly just is so hard to kill. Like he, he went up, he went up against him with all different forms and it just still wasn't enough. Right. I mean, Broly was a quick learner too with that, with all that fighting. Like he picked up how Vegeta was fighting and was able to like mm. start countering stuff and actually block stuff. I don't remember a lot of character stuff for Vegeta in this movie. I've seen it a bunch of times, but I figure it's more of a Goku Broly thing. Well, we get the moment where uh, the the thing I don't like about Super is that they we've seen Goku and Vegeta work together in Z right against Boo, mm. and so they have to keep rolling that back every yeah. arc. Of Vegeta not wanting to work with Goku. Yeah. And so they do that again in Broly with them not wanting to do the fusion dance. But then Goku's like, Ah, but what about Bulma? What about Bra? And Vegeta's <laughs> like, Oh, yeah, I've got family dance. This is a conversation <laughs> from the Boo arc. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, man. It's presented in such a cute way, though, that I think it is. It, I, I'm, I'm not Stance mad about it and I just enjoy it. Right. No, that's what it's. A, I love that movie for what it is. It's fantastic. So moving on from Broly. Doug, this is going to be new stuff, spoilerific for you. I think we can try and keep it short. 
No, but just, take, I, take, I think I can speak about this in spoiler-free terms. Okay, oh, okay. sure. Uh, then go for it, because okay. you've read the manga more recently than I have, because I was just reading it chapter to chapter, and I've not right. gone back. Uh, um, after this is the Moro stuff. Yes, so we're in Moro, and Moro is uh, reckons or it deals a lot with Vegeta reckoning for past crimes that he has committed mm. against certain peoples that we have referenced <laughs> previously in this podcast, uh-huh. <laughs> um, and him coming face to face with that and trying to make good on what he's done. Wow! Uh, and then he goes through a training process that Goku has gone through, and is like, "Hey." Uh, what you showed that guy, I want to do the more advanced stuff. Mm. And so he's going down the path Goku did, but he's like, no, 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 no. That was like training wheels. Take the training <laughs> wheels off and show me what I can do. And then we get more Vegeta and Goku working together, but it's not done in a reluctant way. In fact, that entire arc, they're working together. Mm. Yeah, which is nice, refreshing, where it's not a... Oh, I don't want to do this. I don't want to be next to this guy. It's like, no, we're a team now. Kind of how they did against, uh, I think, like Jiren at the end of the Tournament of Power arc. When, like, Goku's, he's blue, Kaioken blue, and then uh, Vegeta does the evolution blue or whatever, and they're walking. There's stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. I forgot about that stuff, too. There's a a Dokkan card you got to buy. That's the one. (laughs) I I was like, is there a figure of this, Doug? Is that where you're remembering all this from? (laughs) Uh, you know, Vegeta gets a sick new technique, and he uses that in conjunction with Goku in full Master oh. Ultra Instinct at that point. Was it? I don't remember what all the terminology oh, they've added yeah. to that thing is. Doug, Ultra Instinct gets weird. No, there's not just two. <laughs> there's not just sign and then nope. <laughs> Ultra. <laughs> yeah. It redefines itself several oh times. Oh, my God. Much well, like Goku and Vegeta's relationship. Hey, all right. <laughs> I'll get there eventually. Uh, and then just to touch on Granola... Um, you know, I talked earlier about Vegeta being uh, untethered, unwild w- as Majin Vegeta. Mm. And he kind of gets to experience that again um, in Granola. Specifically, he's there on a different planet, Doug. I don't think that's too much spoilers. We're finally in a situation where we're not on Earth anymore. Oh. And Vegeta in this moment realizes he's like, hey, I don't have to worry about protecting my family right now. <laughs> oh. And I can just go I hog can go wild. wild. Wow. Okay. Yeah. And uh, it's. What about it's the... fantastic because it does something for him, <laughs> and <laughs> and then we get a lot more of him. That's right. And Goku. Vegeta is fighting with a boner the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> People underestimate Toyotaro, but this man can draw a boner. It it's might not have anatomy. a good neck. <laughs> not yeah. that boners have necks, but there definitely won't be one. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, it, he works willingly with Goku again. Um, there's a moment where he's given a sensu bean and or, he's given wow. a sensu <laughs> and <laughs> an ATM machine, Doug. Yeah, so that, totally. <laughs> he's given a sensu and he, you think he's going to take it for himself, but he does something else with it. And it's just such a, a subversion of what you would expect Vegeta to do. But then you realize, oh no, Vegeta's not. <laughs> Namek Vegeta. He's a different uh-huh, character now. Uh-huh. Interesting. Okay. Read the manga. Please. <laughs> it's great. Uh, <laughs> skip to this part. Just go and start reading the Moro Granola stuff. I mean, I'd take fucking anything at this point. <laughs> <laughs> now, the only problem with this is like due to production issues of how superhero was written versus what happens in the granola arc Mm -hmm. because in superhero vegeta is mental image training to learn how to move by instinct when specifically he has gone through the moro arc and granola doing the exact opposite of that (sighs) (laughs) oh no that's why i so where we're at in the manga right now, Doug, is they have just started retelling retelling the, the superhero movie. Yeah, yeah, and so they've like added a little bit with um, Kudan getting oh. getting owned by a wasp and <laughs> what? It's there. There, zombie Toyo wasp Taro is doing his damnedest <laughs> to add in stuff that you haven't just seen <laughs> in movie theaters. He's doing his best, man. And, and I'm hoping that part of that will be him trying to um, compensate for the direct contradiction that is made in superhero <laughs> okay and geez. tie that back in but that's that's where vegeta is left off yeah remains to be seen so fingers crossed because i think that's that's a that's a mind that could be mined for things <laughs> it's a mind vegeta mind. specifically and if we could talk about spoilers i could talk about so much more but specifically in moro and granola vegeta is like 10 out of 10 mm-hmm. wow okay even more so than like namek vegeta 
I mean, that's like 20 out of 10. So let's yeah. not get ahead of ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> so I know that we started this episode saying we were all kind of on Team Vegeta one way or another. Might not be our favorite, but he's definitely up there. Closing thoughts on, on after going through all this, talking about him. Does it solidified where he is on your on your yeah. rankings? Yeah, it's not my favorite, but he's still just a fantastic. The series wouldn't be the same without him. Fun character to watch all around. It's so difficult for me because he's a better written character than Piccolo. Mm. But I like Piccolo more. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. It doesn't have to this be logical. Is what it is. Exactly. I'm sure I've said something on this podcast before of who my favorite character is, and I hope that I'm consistent and I think I said it <laughs> watch was Vegeta. You not be. Yeah. But at least after talking about this, like, yeah, for sure. I love this guy and everything that he goes through. And I think, pe- you know, I'm not the first to say it, but Vegeta is the main character of Z. Like, it's not Goku anymore. It's not Gohan. We're not passing that. Vegeta is the main character of that whole section. Yeah. As, as soon as Toriyama put him up front uh, in the Namek saga, people mm. really, like, flocked to him. The, the, as Toriyama said, he's a useful guy to have around. Yeah, yeah. hundred <laughs> percent. Uh, That's a good place to cap it off. I'm going to take us through a quick break. And we're going to come back. We've just got a little bit more stuff to do. We're going to hear what you had to say, the listener. That's right. I'm I'm talking to you, Jeremy, Lisa, (gasps) uh, David, Polly. Polly. You've got actual listeners. Jake Pay, Uh (laughs) Omega Rockman. Absolutely. Uh Who else? Who else? Don't leave them out, Doug. Footlong Shoe. Doug specifically. (laughs) (laughs) John Rogers. John John Rogers. Rogers. Magic Box. That's right. Yeah. I know Mike listens. Yeah. He shakes his Shouts head out. probably a lot. That's okay. I get it. So we're going to take a break and we're going to come back and we're going to listen to you, what your real, pe- real people had to say. Okay, we're back. And we're still going to talk about Vegeta, but we're going to hear what you had to say about Vegeta because we put out a tweet and you responded and people, you got feelings and opinions. And I like that. So first up, I'll take this one is from J Lunar S, our buddy Jacob. Nice to have you responding. Says, how can I highlight this character without repeating what has been said before? Character arc, rivalry, Horikawa, etc. Much less tweet on it. Instead, I must ask the council about their preferred future. Beerus' successor disappears in a supernova or something else. Don't know what that means. You don't have to. That's okay. Oh my god, we didn't talk about Horikawa at all. <laughs> how they are right. The disrespect. We didn't need to. Man needs no introduction. He doesn't, but he needs in he my defense, recognition. In my notes. It, yeah, no, it's, it's, <laughs> okay, well, this is your chance now, since we're talking about it, to bring yes. up what you said about Horikawa in your notes. Uh, yeah, I walked past him at Kameha Khan, the <gasps> first one they did in 2018. Mm. Um, I, Sailor Spaz, you know, she got to be his personal translator, oh, yeah. one of his personal translators. That's awesome. When you go back and you watch the Cyan arc in Japanese for mm. the first time, God. it is like buttery, buttery smooth, yes. like... I'm Vegeta, and I'm here to destroy Earth mm-hmm. and kill everyone. Oh, you know, it's mm-hmm. like obviously better than that, but that's the effect of like how smooth it is because we're used to like rough, older Horikawa now, and mm. yeah, cigarettes, yeah, and yeah, <laughs> hell of a drug, yeah, yeah. Eric Vale. Um, so <laughs> I love Horikawa, and I love Chris Sabat too. You know, to have yeah. them in the same breath, I think Chris Sabat had to take the reins. From the Ocean Crew, his name is... Ryan Drummond, please. There you go. Put some respect on that. Thank I'll, you. I'll remember that. Hey there, everybody. It's me, Randy. Just wanting to say that I screwed up pretty bad. Uh, the actor's name is Brian Drummond, not Ryan Drummond. Ryan Drummond actually is a voice actor who played Sonic the Hedgehog in Sonic Adventure 1 and 2. But yeah, I meant to say Brian Drummond, and I thought I should be the one to get in there and drop some respect on that name, so... Again, my bad, and I'm going to screw it up later. So just remember, there's a B at the start of that name. Thanks. Ryan Drummond, who played a Vegeta that wasn't up higher like this. <laughs> and Sabbath had to work with that. And then yeah. eventually his Vegeta came down like this, but like gruffer in Z. Mm. And then ever since Kai, it's like, it's much more smooth. Yeah. It's a smooth, yeah. it's kind it's of more like natural, that. Not so forced. Yeah. Yeah, he's nailed it. And uh, he speaks with the the faux British, like, slight tinge (laughs) in his voice. Yeah. Which is royalty, right? Yeah. And that's the kind of thing we put on that. I really like Sabbath's Vegeta. I've had meltdowns around 
Sabbath because he lives locally near where I oh, do. Really? <laughs> I live close to Funimation. Yeah. And uh, so I have had actual meltdowns inside of a GameStop oh, <laughs> standing yeah. next to him. Yeah, yeah, I remember <laughs> yeah, that. So uh, I'm not going to stand. Anyways, enough about the English cast. No, but, yeah, he, no, but yeah, he was great. I even found an endearing uh, uh, Chris Sabat when, because it sounded like a younger Vegeta when he was just first starting out. And then it felt like his his voice matured as as the character did yes. in age. Yeah. His Piccolo too. Mm. In Piccolo, yeah. But that, uh, that's why it kind of felt weird to me when he when he redubbed the early Saiyan arc stuff because it just felt like an older Vegeta coming out of a tiny Vegeta body. Yeah. <laughs> and especially because you're, you're conditioned to be listening for Ryan Drummond in English. Today. Yeah. Yeah. As one should. I'm sorry. That's a legendary performance for me. <laughs> <laughs> Is Ryan Drummond's Vegeta. The, you know... Turning this whole place into space dust. Like, yeah, let's man. see what you've got, Kakarot. Oh, I, lo- I love his delivery on that. And I'm going to say... A rap star. <laughs> <laughs> like, obviously, Horikawa, top tier. Wouldn't change so thing. So good. There's one delivery that, Ra- that Drummond got way better, and that is when Vegeta figures out that he was tricked by Gohan with that watch, and he just goes psycho mode to go back. Like, ooh, man, yeah. I watch. I just sometimes just put on that scene because it's yeah. just so good. That the wrath. pure fury <laughs> coming out of that ma- that tiny, spiky-haired man. There's, Not hi- the there's highlights actor, of us but. during Mario Kart night of all of us trying to give our impression of that, isn't there? From like probably like a year ago or something. I was going to say, that's before my time of playing No, Kart. no, I think pretty sure you were there. Definitely you were there. Huh. But yeah. When I was listening to you guys uh, be completely wrong about Z Movie Six, <laughs> I it unlocked the memory of Horikawa's delivery of Big Bang Attack. Yes, that, yeah, and it, the way he sings it almost like Big Bang Attack. Yes, <laughs> I love that. That is like <laughs> seared into my memory. Yes. For, for forever. So I great. had before fast internet. Like I had a 56k modem. I found a place that just had sound clips of Dragon Ball, and I would always just like look up things. And that was one of them. And I listened to that one a lot. I thought that one Big was really bad. rad. Attack. Real media player, dude. That's <laughs> oh, where it's Horikama. at. I still got my fan subs. Horikama. Uh, my real media fan subs on disc, like within arm's reach. I'm missing one disc in the last 20 years that I've had that thing. Oh wow. <laughs> It's Horikawa wild. is such a such a great like gentle soul too because I I saw him I went to Hawaii for a convention uh, mm. just like it's a half vacation half my video my AMV was gonna be playing at a convention there so he was there um so I got like front row of like where he was doing a panel and he's he's doing his best to speak English for the first time um like he like he 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 learned enough English where he's like I'm confident enough I don't need a translator but it was mm. very hard to understand him but but God bless him for like trying like he really stuck to his guns and was like I'm gonna try and and uh, speak English and he just seemed like a, a great gentle gentle soul you you guys have seen the three way final flash that he Drummond and Sabbath did I think at Kamehameha I might right? have, yeah. Oh, so good. I might Those have. three on a panel together was incredible. Ooh, I wish I could have been there. God. Is there a video for that? Because I got to check that out. Yeah, yeah, I think maybe AJ uploaded the whole thing. I'm not sure. Someone okay. did. Um, it is up on YouTube. I will have to check that out. Uh, Doug, would you like to take Dexter here? Yeah. Super Dexter. Dexter says, personally, I find Vegeta the most entertaining when he fails. Cell Saga Vegeta letting Cell go, dismissing Goku's training methods and doubling down on his own all blow up in his face. And it's always fun to watch. <laughs> Definitely agree on that. Yeah, I, I, I love dismissing Goku's training methods. It's just like, oh, you using your master Super Saiyan form? Nah, I'll do it my way. See, I feel that way about Trunks. <laughs> Where you like to see things blow up in his face. That's what you like. Well, I think Trunks is such a great subversion because he's like the pretty boy who shows up and kills Frieza. Right. And then he fails at everything else he does. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm sure that's in other characters too. But yeah, I understand liking a character for when they fail because it's interesting. It makes them more interesting than if they didn't fail. Yeah, it makes the time. it more of a human, like relatable kind of character. Because he still gets back up. Like even if he gets stomped. He's still going to try again, or he's going to come back next arc, and he's going to try his best. Yeah. Uh, Ken, there's a couple here from Scott. Uh, So if you could grab those and let me know what Scott had to say. So first of all, Scott comes in here and he says, he's not just the prince of all science, but the prince of my heart. Oh. Oh. (laughs) And then he says, he's the definition of small dog syndrome, but his personal arc (laughs) and his Majin speech to Goku, no matter the version subbed or dubbed, is legendary right before <laughs> i like the small dog syndrome <laughs> yeah that's like, great i gotta be loud and i gotta bark because i don't gotta bite 
I can immediately <laughs> see a Vegeta dog right now with the Vegeta spiky hair, but like in a do- on a dog. I'm Perfect. sure someone has done that to their poor dog. Definitely. I had a Luxray in oh, okay. uh, <laughs> oh, Soul Silver that a friend of mine traded me, and he is like, I named him Vegeta for you. <laughs> <laughs> Hilarious. Thanks, man. You know me because his hair does kind of. <laughs> it does kind of spike up. Yeah. Uh, I got this one from Melv Tofu at Melv Boo. It says, I find Vegeta the most compelling when he isn't on Goku's level, when he is the underdog and still tries his hardest anyway, even when he knows he isn't the guy for the job. Highlights how far he has come, the more than him getting the kill on whatever villain ever would. Yeah, I don't like the whole thing where there's that kind of time during like resurrection f and stuff where it's like oh they're just one and the same they're just kind of interchangeable they're both at the same level yeah but when he's striving to prove himself like that's when it's that's that's some good stuff that's some that's good when the Vegeta. tactician in him comes out and he's like oh he's his own, he's his own character he can he can't rely on his power strength gotta use, his, gotta use that brain yeah and that's what's great about you know, could it in too? And mm-hmm. Yeah, Vegeta and, and they, you know, I was going to say like, like they should share some takoyaki together. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I have figures that can make him do that. But um, yeah, no, it's like the 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 side characters like Tenshin Han, Yamcha, everyone like they almost got delegated to what Vegeta has become, where it's just like the character that's not as strong as Goku, but has to use his wits about him. Where uh, unfortunately Tenshin Han and them got brushed under the rug for most of the story mm-hmm. later on. Absolutely, Doug. Do you want to take Jake Pay here? Yeah, good old Jake. He says, Vegeta will always be a top contender for best character. He's got the power, skills, and best development in the series. His moral compass is on full display in the Moro arc, and as he comes to terms with his past actions and where he is now. All hail the Prince of Saiyans. <laughs> that dang I mean, yeah. Moro arc. <laughs> You'll get there, Doug. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, he's got, the, he's got you know, the best development in the series. Like I said, Z, that's his show. He's the star. Yeah, yeah, he really, yeah, he really does. I was, I was gonna try, try to think of someone else that does, but he's the most f- uh, fleshed out, really. Ken, do you want to take Jacob? Yeah, Jacob Sawyer says my wife loves him. <laughs> I think he's a great character and one that has that really has a character arc. He was awesome in the Cyan through Frieza arcs. Hated him in the Android Cell arcs. Oh. That's me editorializing on that. <laughs> <laughs> From Boo onwards, though, I have pretty much loved the guy. Nice. Oh, so there's someone that doesn't like him during the Android Cell stuff. So, Jacob, I want you to get back to, to Randy and Doug. Yeah. And, and get back to me, too. Yeah, so they get to us. Did we change your mind? Did we change your mind yeah, yeah, yeah. on Android and Cell? Or do you at least understand? Do you at least get what we're coming from? Because we, we see where you're coming from, too. Yeah, absolutely. But I think you gotta give him a second chance there. The, the flaws is what makes him so endearing. Yeah. Uh, and I'll take this last one from some guy named Mike. He says, hey, so Doug, what you think of Ultra Ego? Uh, well, when you become a big TikTok star like I have, you gotta make sure your <laughs> ego's in check. You, it can't, I don't go ultra with all that stuff. I just, I keep it humble, you know? Mike, we're working on it, okay? Four pages at a time. I still don't know what if what I've seen with this purple Vegeta is real is or fan real? art. <laughs> like, it's just like, <laughs> did someone go crazy with their with their fan art again? Or, I don't know. You'll just have to read and find I'm out. I'm sure yeah. I'll appreciate it with context. I think so, too. Yeah. So, thank you, everybody, for all of that. That's really great. Uh, grad to s- grad? Glad grad. to see. Glad to see that you're all Super Saiyan into grad. this character. <laughs> Speaking of Vegeta. My Cyan si- si- <laughs> Brad. <laughs> I've got some trivia, and oh, shit, it's I not forgot. a lot. <laughs> it's not a lot of trivia, and I've got, a, I've got a bone to pick with some people. And I know Ken is in the room, and it might be on him, too. So I'm sorry. So I struggled to find some trivia because I couldn't really think of anything on top of my head. I was like, let's see if there's any good places I can go for this. There's the Dragon Ball Wiki which provides some information here and there, but did not deliver with the trivia. So mm-hmm. I decided to go check out that their Konzenshu wiki. There's a website too? There's a website. And man, that Vegeta page is barren. Like really? this man is the main character. Fill in all this stuff. I need <laughs> more stuff on this wiki. Uh, Randy, if you have access to look at the wiki, it means you have access to edit the wiki. <laughs> so I think you just gave yourself a job. Ooh, shit. I thought about that on when on I was you. driving home. <laughs> here's the thing i don't i've done like two pages on that and i don't feel confident in what i'm doing at all and i'm scared that if i write anything someone's gonna come yell at me and like you didn't do this right and i'm like well at least i started now somebody can clean it up like i i unloaded the boxes you 
take yeah. care of the rest. That's, that's the first. Figure out where they go. The first draft. Sounds like you've already made peace with that. So get so, started. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> Do your thing. But not from a boss. The boss men will be <laughs> upset at me. No, no. Therese is the boss. That's true. Therese is the boss. So she, I'm scared of her. I mean, I'm doing. I'm doing things. I'm doing Photoshop work. <laughs> okay. So I'm doing something. Man. That said, here's a few trivia questions for you. This is going to be another thing of raise your hand. Are we doing buzzer so, style? Yeah, okay. Yeah. Like all science and most characters in Dragon Ball, Vegeta is a pun on something. What is he a name pun of? Is that a joke? Doug, you can have this one. <laughs> no, don't give me this one. <laughs> it's a pun on Veggie Tales, the famous uh, yes. show from back in the late 90s. Point to it's Doug. It's a pun... No, it's a pun on the Vegeta brand. Yeah, the, the rice. What, what is that? I think it's yeah. rice. Yeah, 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 yeah. The chef's kid. We all do the right. motion. Point to both of you. That's correct. <clears throat> Question number two. Per the manga, how many times has Vegeta performed the Gyatic Hull? Ooh, per the manga. Gallic gun. Oh, uh, no, that's... By name. That's so... By name. By name in the manga. How many times has he shouted that and done the attack? Doug. I'm going to say once. As far as I know, yes, that's correct. Once. Is I that believe he's trying to think... He would have maybe against Kiwi, but... Uh, no, he did the fireworks against right. Kiwi. Now, here's a bit of trivia that I know Uh-oh. Randy doesn't He's have. He's reverse trivia. It requires you. having gone deep into the guidebooks Ooh. in ways that you're not going to find on the wiki. <laughs> but the <laughs> wiki in, in uh, I guess, Daizenshu 7 and Shozenshu 4 in the entry for Big Bang Attack mm-hmm. spends most of its entry talking about how it's not like Gallic Gun. <laughs> really? <laughs> You wouldn't believe how not like that one attack this is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's interesting. Wait, so that I didn't get that, good. did I get that answer right? You didn't make a big fanfare out of it. Like, Doug, got it no, right. No, you did. As far you as I was like, yeah, as far as I know. Like, why don't you just say, yeah, Doug, you got it right. Okay. Well, you you have the point. But if somebody Thanks. wants to argue. Yeah. I, I, didn't, I didn't feel like I was appreciated from getting an I actual was, answer sorry. right. I was trying to cover my own ass that I might be wrong. And <laughs> yeah. I didn't, didn't give you the fanfare you deserved. I think it's one. I remember Galagun being in a uh, cell using it in perfect cell against uh, Vegeta or Trunks. I was like, oh, that's cool. They're using the move again. And I believe he uses it again in Super. I think it's like in the universe. With Trunks. Oh, yeah, yeah. He definitely does in Super. Yeah. Yeah. So you Father's, can try to do Father, it. son, Galico. Let's see how well you do in this next one then, both of you. As per the manga, how many times has Vegeta used the Big Bang attack? Just the one time, right? You get the point. Yeah. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Just the okay. one time. Wow. These like iconic moves are just done once. Next question. As per the manga, how many Once, times has Vegeta used flash. the final flash? <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> By name, because he does that thing against Dracoom that's kind of looks right. Like it, that's pre pre final. That's a almost done flash. Yeah. This next. So in the in the manga, he's done gamma burst flash more times <laughs> than the, he's done yeah, no, 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 no. <laughs> the many beam. No, attack. that's a gamma, new thing. Gamma Burst Flash, and this is not a video podcast, but he like puts his hands back like this, uh-huh. and then when he blasts it, it's like this, I think, what? or something. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, it's like a... It's in Heroes. It's like reverse. That is cool, though. Kamehameha. Like, the Gallic the Gallic gun is kind of like a monkey's uh, paw, like the way he shoots it. I didn't it. think of that. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's very Saiyan-like, you know? Huh. And the way, the way you just did with the, whatever you said, the Gamma thing, <laughs> it's also like the monkey's yeah. paw. <laughs> There's no manga so that he uses it in, so I can't bring up how many times does he use Final Shine, which is in Final GT. Shine. <laughs> Probably just the one time. Probably just the one time. Yeah. Did I use we'll it? We'll have to watch it and find out. We'll have to watch it. <laughs> this one, Ken is exempt from. Doug. Oh, because it's superhero stuff? No. This is just for you, Doug. How old was Vegeta when he was killed by Frieza? Ooh. Uh, th- oh, I'm going to say 39. I'm going to say 39. You're going to say 39? Yeah. Doug, what's... Or Ken... <laughs> Ken, what's the answer? 30. He is Oh, 30. I was nine years old. <laughs> <laughs> no point because Ken is exempt, but Ken gets to flash. Yeah. How far go Vegeta? Is Vegeta apart in years? Five years. Okay. And <laughs> this this last one. According to Dragon Ball Super Broly, how many other Saiyans were with Vegeta on his mission while Frieza destroyed planet Vegeta? Dang. Oh. Ken. And raise three. Oh, wait, no. no wait. Four. There's a gaggle. Since I didn't give a response, yes, you were right. It is four because he is with Raditz, yeah. Nappa, and two other dudes who I don't know the names yeah. of, but somebody's right. probably just... named it. Yeah. I was just thinking of the adults and straight up forgot about Raditz. <laughs> Raditz. <laughs> <laughs> little baby Raditz. Little, little Raditz. So this episode's running long, but I did want to 
highlight something. If you're listening to the show on Spotify, there is some interaction stuff you can check out in there. Each episode for the last three, I've included polls so that you that are episode specific. So you can go in there, you can cast your vote about something. Sometimes there's a question that you can also answer and reply to. Um, for the episode, what's your favorite? Uh, or sorry, when we were talking about games, uh, I had asked people uh, what their favorite. Uh, what single game title would you want us to deep dive into? And we got a response. <laughs> and that one was from Lord Mamanga, who says, Dragon Ball Z, Budokai Tenkaichi 2. <laughs> and I told Doug, and I think he screamed. Uh, <laughs> I'm holding it back the last right thing now. He wants to do. <laughs> uh, for that episode, um, I asked you, what's your favorite Budokai game? And not surprisingly, number one pick, Budokai 3. 3. Otherwise, everything else was a tie, except for two and the Shin Budokai series. But okay, one, below. Infinite World and Burst Limit all tied up. Yeah. And then I'm for... looking forward to Tenkaichi 4, though, now as more time is going by. <sighs> Give it to me. <sighs> yeah. Uh, for the episode where we talked about characters that got the short end of the stick, I asked which forgotten character most deserves some time in the spotlight. And the options I gave were Yamcha, Lunch, Oob, Chichi, Raditz, Yajirobe, and Majin Buu. And it was pretty tight. The whole way through, except Raditz won. Wow. People want to see Raditz. Wow. I have a theory, and that the is theory? that there was a pretty in-depth video series done by Mazako X. That's about immediately what, what I if, thought. That's immediately yeah, what, what I thought, too. <laughs> what if Raditz joined the team? He must have done a great see, job. Yeah, I know that it was a, a long and involved process. So I think yeah. maybe that has awoken some desire to see Raditz. And I know that Dragon Ball movies lately, they're like, let's bring Frieza back. Let's bring Broly back. Right. I think bring next Bardock movie is back. Raditz. <laughs> Raditz is coming back. With He's going to get his time to shine. Uh, frankly, yeah, a little, little overdue. I mean, what a what a character to be someone's brother. Right. And for them not to milk it, it seems very untoy like Yeah. I'll allow it if it's a Raditz and Kula movie. <laughs> I don't want it to be Kula. I just oh, don't. Okay. And I the can't brothers. Explain. You guys didn't like movie six. Movie Get five was, it. It was a good movie. I don't understand how anyone can defend the movie anymore <laughs> after seeing it. I, that, that movie was <laughs> utter garbage. We're going to have a response episode right. from Ken that's going to be an hour long. Yeah. Just talking about why yes, movie Yes, tell me why great. it's good. I must be missing right. something. Kula, listen, Kula is going through a midlife crisis <laughs> and he has PTSD. So you got to think about it this way. <laughs> Uh, and then finally, last week's, are you excited about the newly announced Budokai Tenkaichi game? Everyone um, said no. Majority of people says, heck yes, can't wait. Otherwise, <laughs> what are the other options? W- there's one vote for, eh, I don't know. And the uh, last okay. one was zero interest. And nobody said zero interest. <laughs> okay. There's one person said, I don't know. That was Everybody me. Everybody else was, is like, yes. I was like, eh, I don't know. <laughs> that was me. <laughs> so this is the part where we sign out. But there's one other special thing. You've stuck around for a long ass episode about Vegeta, which I appreciate. And the same thing goes to you, Doug, and you, Ken. Took a lot of your night for this. And I apologize, or you're welcome. I don't know. I don't know what else you had planned. <laughs> but uh, we have liked Ken a lot. And when two podcasters like another person very much, they invite <laughs> him into the <laughs> They invite him into their thruple now. <laughs> so uh, I hope that listener you like ken as much as we do because i hate that guy <laughs> <laughs> call him detective x to his face no He'll love it. <laughs> no <laughs> <laughs> he won't die on the spot <laughs> and say hey detective x i love you on that podcast that you join <laughs> and um ken i know that we talked about it before but like if i could get on bed and knee and say ken will you be on my podcast <laughs> How do you how do you respond in in a public place? Uh, stop making a fool out of yourself. Yeah, get, oh, get up, get up. We're in a public place. Yeah, get stand up. Put on right some now. put on some clothes, sorry, please. People are, people are looking. Yeah, it's gonna take a bit. I'm old. I'm fat. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta get it back up on my feet. Okay. Yeah. Sure. Oh, okay. Cool. <laughs> yeah. See, Randy's trying to ice me out. First, it's like let's invite Ken. Doug, you can miss a podcast or two here and there. Next thing I know, it's still like yeah, this is gonna be like Cheers when uh, Diane or Diane leaves. I'm Rebecca. You're Watch Rebecca. Out. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> no, I love my peeps equally. So yeah, Ken, it's always what... great to have you on, man. So whenever you get a chance, you're more than welcome. <laughs> you say to. that, and I've only been on one time before this. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> always great. You're you always here one time. You're always here in spirit. That's what I mean. I we we ref- you know we reference you all the time. <laughs> He'll get there. Podcast. <laughs> Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> but you bring a great energy. You bring a lot of uh, enthusiasm and a lot of knowledge uh, that I I feel that I'm lacking. I, I know I'm lacking. <laughs> uh, my, uh, my vocabulary goes like, yeah, that episode was great. 
That's it, but Ken. <laughs> my energy is brought to brought to you Pro- by energy drinks. <laughs> My balls. Oh, which, which one? Happened. Specifically, B- Ken? B-A-W-L-S. What are you gurgling there? Gurgling balls tonight. Oh, okay. Let the record yeah. show he's holding up a, a can of balls. B-A-W-L-S. Not a sponsor. <laughs> so, and I don't think I'll buy it again, so definitely not a sponsor. Not, a, not again, no. But yeah, it's exciting. We're glad to have you, and i got to rewrite the intro to say trio instead of duo. Okay, well, he hasn't accepted that. coming on every every episode yet, has he? He did. I was on bed to knee. We did the thing, and I got up, and he said, yeah, sure. <laughs> sure. Unless something catastrophic happens, yeah, I'll be here as many times <laughs> as I can. Great. Hell yeah. I love that. So everybody here that has been listening, thank you for listening. We love interacting with you and keeping you in the conversation, talking about our favorite franchise in the world. Please continue to talk to us. You can tweet at us at we got a pod. You can email us at we got a pod at gmail.com. Thank you to Rifter Beats for letting us use this track, Kakarot Theme, Hip Hop Trap Remix. You can find that track and other great music by Rifty on his SoundCloud. We also want to give a shout out to our sponsors. Thanks for all the sweet, sweet Zenny. Ken, where can the good people find you? Uh, here, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> here now, <laughs> with Randy on yeah. bended knee. <laughs> I'm not trapped in here with you. You're trapped (laughs) in here with me. (laughs) But Twitter, you want people to follow you there? Oh, yeah. (laughs) I guess for a serious answer. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, At Detective X on Twitter. Great. How about you? You can get me at Saver underscore Breaker. Doug. And I'm Jabaz Doug. If you like our little show, please go ahead and subscribe. And if you really want to help out even more with the write a review or tell your fellow Dragon Ball fans about us. No, no. Write a review and tell your just fellow or. Dragon Ball friends. Do and both. even even He's... tell your if your mom knows who Vegeta is, she should be listening <laughs> to this podcast. Fan, yeah. <laughs> tell her Doug sent you. <laughs> we'll see you next time everybody. Bye-bye. Anybody need to take a pee break? We've been yeah, going. Yeah, I'm for actually going to take you. I've gargled so many balls. I'm gonna... <laughs> <laughs> That's going to make it into the post show now. Sure is. Please add the context. It's a drink. <laughs> I will not.